Is that saying good morning? Okay. Welcome to the March 2nd meeting of the Historic District Commission. Uh, the board's actions in these matters have been deemed to be quasi -judicial. recording in progress <laughs> in nature but well, that's nice if any person believes any member of the board has a conflict of interest that issue should be raised at this point or it will be deemed waived um, so we have a little something going on with our approval of minutes that's going to save us at least 30 seconds or a minute um, Nick has decided that um, we should move these approval of these minutes off till the next one week, meeting. just next week. Uh, next I want week. to review them first. Next week. Okay. So, um, if somebody would make that motion, I move that we um, move the approval of the minutes from last month to next week's meeting. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All those against? Um, it, we only seem to have one administrative approval. That is and correct. I believe that Martin might have to recuse myself. I do have to okay. recuse myself. Oh. <laughs> so, with a little bit of humor, Nick, take. Okay, I'll try not to butcher it, Martin. You but want the no, I don't need to go. Uh, 239 Northwest Street, recently approved, and I think we've done one administrative approval related to this project already. It's under construction. What the applicant is seeking to add is an exterior light beside the front exterior door and replace two fixed windows uh, on the side of the door, I believe, with um, siding. So add a light, and which is specified and was in the original application, and it's shown on the second sheet. Sorry, I'll scroll down for people that are watching. Uh, get it the right size, maybe. This is the house. Here's the proposed light on the second detail sheet. So it's pretty straightforward to my eyes. Any any questions for me or the applicant? Okay. So um, if somebody would like to make a motion, nobody's got any questions. Um, motion to approve is presented. I'll second. Okay. All those in. Which alternate is voting since Martin? Oh, actually, both me. of them are. Both. Uh, Dan's Dan's right. Dan is missing, so both are, of you are voting. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And against? Okay. So we're moving right along to public hearing. New business petition of Theodore M. Stiles and Joan Boyd, owners for property located at 28 South Street. Wherein permission is requested to allow new construction to an existing structure, add two rear additions. As per plans on file in the planning department, said property is shown on assessor map 102, is lot 43, lies within the general residence B and historic districts. Um, who is here to present this? And Hi, good evening, Ann Whitney, architect for the project. Um, yes, we are proposing uh, two small additions at the rear. Um, I just included the site plan from the zoning just to give you a sense of the location. It's a, at the rear of the structure. There's a really nice garden in the back um, backyard. So um, that A addition, if you go to the two of three, um, there's a floor plan and some photos. Um, Basically, we're adding some space to sort of the eat-in kitchen space. Um, and actually, this sheet mainly shows some context photos and has the, uh, the window schedule. Um, the only other, the only place you can see this is from Marcy Street, um, the Manfo property looking over the fence. So that's the only sort of view of this back of the structure. The third page um, shows some elevations. Um, that A addition, which is in the upper left, um, you can see the existing two-story 
structure is uh, fairly plain on that side, and this <coughs> will be bumping out four feet. Um, currently, on that back elevation, those three win existing windows are nine over sixes, but all the other windows in the house are six over six, and they were all replaced before my clients had purchased the property. So what I'm proposing to do, which is a little unusual on that bay, is to change those windows to a six over one cottage style, um, similar pane size to the existing windows above, um, just to be able to have that space be more open to the garden. And since it can't really be seen um, straight on from anywhere. And then there's an existing kitchen window that would also get swapped out so the windows on that elevation would be matching. If you go to the right, um, the one-story addition on the, where the house the, creates an L is, um, we're mainly creating a, a better access to the rear yard, but right now this, um, the old part of the house on the, um, behind this one-story addition, there's a, there's a beautiful dining room with a fireplace and lots of built-ins, but in order to get from the kitchen to that dining room, you have to walk all the way around the house. So this addition here is allowing for a small pantry area and a direct access from the kitchen to this dining room. Um, got a uh, 15 light um, door and the side elevation um, has a small, has a nine light awning window. There's an existing uh, window that actually it's didn't get replaced. It's one of the older older windows. I think you can see it if you go back to two of three on that. Um, there's a couple photos of that. Um, when the kitchen was redone, it's it's really just covered over, um, and I'd like to remove that existing window and then you know because it's so close to the addition. It's not having any function on the interior of the house. Um, the only other, um, on this three of three that you can see on the bay, um, going to four over ones, same, same orientation on the side windows of the bay. Um, we're probably just going to be putting this on posts. Um, and we'd be doing vertical board skirting. There's no plumbing that's going to be happening in the space. So um, we're going to be matching materials, roof trim details, um, siding, and we'll be putting some vertical board skirting around um, these additions to connect them to the ground. Um, we're proposing to use the uh, Actually, I think we are using uh, the, sometimes you do this three weeks ago, and <laughs> the Marvin signature. You know, in the house, when the windows were replaced in the house before the clients bought it, they used the Marvin aluminum clad, and we're going to be using those same windows. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Do you have any questions, anybody, over on this side? I don't. No? No. No, no questions at all? Nothing about trim, moldings, <clears throat> soffits, fascias, corner boards, nothing? It's not my area. It's not your area. Not Over here. Ms. Margo? I just wanted to ask what material you'll be using for the vertical skirting. Excuse me? The skirting? The material for the vertical skirting. Yeah, it'll be painted and it'll probably be um, a lifespan, which is, you know, it's a wood product, but it's um, treated, primed. Doesn't move around as much as the AZAC, and it's nicer to work with, but it's rot resistant. I guess I have a question. It's kind of nitpicky, um, but I guess I was just wondering why, why bother replacing that one window that's a nine over six with the new bigger. The I just I <clears throat> thought you know we don't really have to do that. Um, but I just, they felt that um, to get a little more view out into the backyard from the kitchen and that it felt like it balanced that elevation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not really a deal breaker for me, but it's, it's 
one of those things where it's like, well, the, this type of window, in my mind, makes sense on this addition bay window because it's a new addition. Right. Um, but that's sort of an <coughs> original or at least an existing it was an addition. window yeah. opening. Yeah, there so, was an addition done a long time ago. And the other, um, it's the same size as the other windows in the house that are mm -hmm. all six over six. Oh, they just crammed in a nine over, over six for them? Yeah, oh. yeah. All right, well, that's weird. Really? Okay. You can see that one existing window I'm showing on that rear elevation, you know, that's your typical window size for the first floor. And you can see when you go to a basically a, a nine a nine over six, then you're, you know, breaking that pane size up down. Um, anyone else over there? Uh, Karen, I would uh, say that you're voting on this okay. tonight. So um, uh, if you want to ask some questions. I really don't have any questions on it. It seems pretty straightforward. Okay, David. Um, I'm assuming that she's going to match the trim in, in uh, profile and uh, dimension yes. for the various features that are going on. Yeah, and it's a pretty simply trimmed house to begin with. And it, it seems like a pretty simple, what we'd think of as a somewhat modern addition on the back of the building. Right. That this is all to clutter up around. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, we'll make that a stipulation. Then. And actually, the, the first floor. The windows will have um, the band mold, which is um, typical of the existing, you know, windows that were. So it's going to have, you know, a heavier sill and, you know, trim with a band mold, which is shown on the drawings. Can okay, you get that? Yeah. Uh, I, Anne? Yes. Yep. Just a question. I mean, uh, you're leaving the uh, vent louver for the attic. Is that correct? Oh you, yeah, I just didn't. Um, I didn't note that. Yeah, I missed noting that. Yep. Thank you. Well, um, I'll open this up to members of the public. If anybody would like to speak on this addition, apparently there's nobody out there. Is there anybody just waiting to get online? <coughs> <coughs> Raise your hand if you'd like to speak to any item. Uh, as of yet, there isn't anybody raising their hand. Okay. So I'm going to close this uh, public hearing, and we could have uh, a motion, any discussion if you want. But, uh, would somebody like to take it? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move that we approve this application with the stipulation that the uh, uh, trim and uh, siding features of the building match the existing that they're going against. Um, just as a, a point, I, I, I do understand that there's a, it seems kind of, kind of odd to, to see one window that is not affected being changed to make it look more like the thing that's being added on. Usually we think of it going the other direction. But um, I'm, I'm not offended by that little bit of whimsy on the back of this a addition to a, a primary house. Yeah, same. Okay, second? I'll second. All right. Screen. Oh. It probably isn't, but it doesn't. Uh, I don't even see an opening. Yeah. Oh. Should we stipulate half screen and just in case? I don't know. If... Yeah. I mean, it's yep. there. Windows open. They're... They don't yeah. open? Half screen is a little more complicated than the. Right. <laughs> it's very complicated. Because <laughs> they're not split evenly. They're not split evenly, but they would just be on the lower side. Okay. The center window has no. Right. Yeah. No? Okay. All righty. Um, so I guess it's um, time for a vote. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 And against? And the chair votes aye. Um, David, would you like to mention a few? I think that it's uh, compatible with the uh, surrounding architecture and uh, makes a, a nice fit in with its neighborhood. Very good. All righty. Moving on. Thank you, Ann. Yep. Petition of Mill Pond View LLC owner for property located at 179 Pleasant Street, wherein permission is requested to allow changes to a previously approved design, changes to the sunroom and roof design, as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 108. It's lot 15 and lies within the mixed research office and the historic districts. Who's here to make this presentation? 
Good evening, Carla Goodnight from CJ Architects, uh, as well as uh, Jake Peter from CJ Architects and David Calkins, general contractor and owner's representative. Um, I'd like to start with a brief overview of where of the uh, process that we have uh, undertaken to evaluate this property and these structures. And uh, I can start with our letter, our, our agenda, which includes the, uh, Dave has written a very specific exterior renovation scope of work document. Uh, we have included a brick and mortar analysis of the similar property at 205 Market Street for any masonry work that would need to be done. Um, as well as masonry sealant. Um, we've developed a timeline, a annex scope of work, uh, proposed design and restoration, as well as um, existing and proposed details, materials, and reference. Um, the property timeline illustrates multiple modifications to the historic structures over time. Uh, we've had a couple of site walks with the board. We have brought in <coughs> many historic consultants who are all listed here to share their opinions and findings and recommendations. Um, and most recently, actually, Tim Berry has walked through and um, given us some options on uh, the paint removal and paint uh, handling of the paint and some of the areas that we have been told are uh, worth preservation or, you know, have value uh, as historic elements. Um, Dave has done some additional exploratory work with structural and has some comments he'd like to share on the timeline and then uh, we'll move on. First, I think Tim would be upset with me if I didn't say we explored the coatings process, uh, removing <laughs> uh, the coating and, and new application coating, not paint. You know. <laughs> so um, just uh, a very interesting tidbit. Uh, 1784, we know it was, uh, the house was constructed, speaking in round terms, so 1780, the house is built. We were under the impression, 1859, Mark Wentworth purchased the house, at which point it probably underwent the sizable renovation to include the annex, the windows, a stylistic change. In doing some more exploratory work, we found under or in the walls and under some of the flooring newspapers dating 1888, 1889, all in the double parlor as we're exploring that north side wall. So now I'm starting to think that actually 1888, 1889 is when the transformation occurred. So again, in round numbers, 1780, the house is constructed, 1890, undergoes a massive transformation stylistically and in addition, 100 years. And then seemingly the house is not touched again until 1980, where the third floor, the annex uh, third floor is all uh, converted into living space. And so it, almost another 100 years go by and then this thing sees another massive importing of work. And at each level, it's almost like the quality of work comes <laughs> down a little bit. And here we are now, 40 years later from the 1980 mark, trying to uh, you know, piece all of this together and make the, uh, the house right again. So just a, a tidbit as we continue our process here. Thank you. I did ask Dave is saving the newspaper he found. So um, <laughs> in the 2.0 series, uh, we're very carefully mapping out uh, the plans for the annex. Uh, 2.0 series illustrates the selective demolition shown in blue and green as, reviews, as reviewed on site and uh, preservation and restoration elements in the pink and the orange, which includes trim, shutters, moldings um, for uh, preservation and restoration. And uh, Dave can explain in detail how he's planning to handle that, as well as um, I believe window woman is our selection for rebuilding all of the uh, original windows that are still remaining in the annex and anything else would be replaced in kind with the uh, Marvin windows in wood, the wood Marvins as specced in the materials. Uh, moving on to 2.1, uh, 
Uh, there is a dormer in the existing mansion shown in the, uh, in the snapshot at the top, which will be rebuilt, extensively damaged from the attachment of the annex and uh, that is included in the structural evaluation. The angled bay is really non-contributing as a historic element. I think everyone on the site walk agreed on that. Um, so that will be removed and the original trim molding shutters and windows will be removed, restored, and reinstalled. Uh, moving on to 2.2. Um, this single-story radial... Carla, can I just make a quick comment? Sure. Um, going back to 2.0 before we sure. get to it. That there's only one existing dormer. On, on 2.0, so the south side of the... 2.0. I'm sorry, yes. Yeah, just, <laughs> just to clarify for your drawings. We've just struggled a little bit on that with the um, previously approved, because it's technically an amendment, so it's approved, but so it's there, but it's not there. Right, right. Okay. Sorry, thank you for it. that. I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, you also didn't mention the... Um, Bay window and all that stuff I know that you have, but is it? Yes, yeah, on 2.1, 2. Yeah. the yeah. bay window yeah. on the bottom, yeah. it, are you speaking of the one on um, the, door, the east door. elevation on 2.1? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. So that will be demolished as non-contributing element. So... <clears throat> Moving on, then I'm not sure where I left off, but the single story radial three season porch structure was added over a patio in 1982. The construction is very poor. Um, vapor barriers are needed under the slab and masonry knee wall. Um, everything about it is new. Windows are new, uh, failing. And the annex, um, the annex itself as uh, shown in the structural evaluation is constructed on an unstable foundation and some portions of it are constructed directly on dirt. Um, the annex was added as Dave mentioned sometime during the 1800s and its roof line which is this is significant besides the foundation issues and the placement directly on the soil. Uh, the roof line of the annex as seen in this window close up on 2.2, it appears there are two lights in the bottom sash and one light in the top sash. Uh, what you're actually seeing there is half of the upper sash because the roof line of the annex was built to bisect the uh, historic window at the grand central stair midway through the top. So uh, the also during the installation of the annex, two of the primary roof timbers were compromised during construction. And um, in the 1980s, the majority of the original interior of the annex was demolished to create an apartment. So it was kind of a 1980s apartment in there uh, as, as of uh, time of purchase. So. Several areas of siding on the exterior and some of the trim is also new and therefore the approach is to remove, restore and preserve all remaining exterior historic elements and reinstall them and these historic elements have been determined by the list of people on the page, the page one and reinstall them on new framing, siding and roofing constructed at an appropriate height above the historic window sash to um, free up that window and uh, uh, restore that that element. Any questions? Uh, on Dave is going to take a minute. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Do you have a question? Any questions? Have you <clears throat> yet? Dave is going to talk about the chimney. Um, I would just like to uh, say that I find the, um, the window that is obstructed um, the panes are of a uh, unusual size. Um, I'm wondering if um, any research could be done on that, that possibly the window could have been a nine over nine or something similar to that because um, <laughs> myself, 
and uh, I have never seen um, that proportion hmm. in window um, pane sizes. Um, I would ask David if he has seen that either. Out of my pay scale. Huh? Sorry. <laughs> well, you get a raise. Then. Yeah. yeah. What do you well, think? The, the plan is to turn with that sash and window over to window woman and have it, it just be seems restored. that that would be a grand uh, window in, mm. in that location mm -hmm. and um, well, that's I don't a, know the proportions are on it would be pretty grand for that time period though those proportions well there were similar buildings um, at this time that had arched windows or that oh, classic sure. palladian flanked arch window mm -hmm. uh, that was a theme that was used over and again um, it, I would say, I mean, uh, uh, that if there was a place for a unique window, which wasn't all that common a thing uh, at this time, but if there was a place for a unique window, that certainly would be the place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, but it truly, I, 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 I just, though I guess part of it is, is, is this, there are so many ways that one can be unique. Uh, yeah. that I've never been able to categorize it from the limited things that I've seen. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that was just my comment. Anyway, I think it's I, a good one. But. You know, it just doesn't fit the golden rule. Hmm. All right. I'll turn it over to Dave, and he can give you uh, his uh, conversation summary with Masonry. Um, just to the window real quick, through conversations, opinions, I was told that um, a nine over nine is consistent with some of the Georgian style architecture, where most of the house is six over six, so that could have been a nine over nine consistent with the rest. And then also I was told for a way to show uh, opulence or that you had the money would be the size of the pane of the glass in that time, not necessarily the light cut per se, but the size of the glass. Yeah. Again, all an education I'm getting as we go through here. Um, <clears throat> the chimney in the annex, uh, we've approached this just how we have approached everything with this project as far as looking at it from different angles. So uh, I just want to refer to, it's sheet SK1 on the structural, if that's, quite a bit. If that's a possibility. How deep is that? It's like 40, <laughs> 40 pages ahead. It would be yeah, easier. We, if, all right. It we, would be easier if we let her go because Nick has to catch up and then he's got to get back. Yeah. All right. So we'll look at it, Nick, later. It's it's fine. We'll reference it now. Um, mm -hmm. So the chimney, as some of you have saw, uh, I believe it's an earthen chimney. It comes down. There is no proper foundation underneath this thing. It's a rubber, a rubble, uh, dirt mass that's underneath the chimney. It's in the annex. So we looked at, in proposing to take the building down, can we support the chimney? Sure. Would the chimney survive an excavation process to be able to put in a proper foundation for the new annex? More than likely not. Uh, the, the foundation for the chimney isn't there, um, and there's no way safely I could do that uh, and ensure that A, the chimney would stand and everyone would be safe on the job site. So then we looked at, is there a way to preserve the section above the roof line, which you will see further in the notes. Uh, I met with quite a few people and we thought we had a promising um, option, which was to fill the chimney with either like an open cell foam that doesn't expand as much, or um, I believe they call it, uh, not fluid fill, fill film, uh, like they would use inside of a masonry uh, foundation and cap it and then in, uh, create the chimney, lift it off. So we're pretty confident that we could get that section off. However, the mason is not confident on reattaching that thing and having it safe when we reattach it to the new building. So after looking at sort of the evolution of how we could do this, we've come to the conclusion that the, the safest, best way to proceed is that we would take the chimney down, replace it in kind. I just wanted you to know how we arrived at that decision. Okay, Carla. All right, continuing on, um, Dave, don't go too far. Two, three. <laughs> three point oh, uh, elevation by elevation. Dave has prepared his plan for uh, for what the work that needs to be done, um, and I mean it's more of a restore restorative 
water sealing, uh, you know, um, reconstructing kind of uh, repair uh, explanation. Uh, so I had him just highlight uh, some of the items that he plans on doing and, and uh, the, I don't want to read the lengthy report, obviously, but the elevations have keys and the keys are uh, tied to the photographs so you can see the details as they are. Um, and then uh, Dave also has uh, in his report a, uh, some photographs of how he plans to restore the column bases with the custom elements. So Dave, do you want to just highlight the be front elevation and or uh, west elevation? Yep. We've gone through this, so I'll uh, focus on more of the uh, disruptive components. The, the front of the mansion really is a, a restorative effort where siding, trim, everything will be scraped, sanded, uh, repainted. Uh, the column bases we're proposing, uh, I believe it's an ionic sort of style to match the capital, so those will be PVC bases because they do contact the granite slab. I would prefer that anyways. Um, Really on the north side, as uh, proposed, I'd like to take up 18 inches of siding from the bottom so we could expose the sill beam and address water issues that we know are there. Aside from that, windows are all going to be restored. Siding and trim will be restored or preserved and painted. That's really good. Okay. Uh, one thing that Dave did note is this upper right-hand corner and I have in image two, you can see that the uh, dental moldings along the right side of the photograph are very crisp and new and clean and the ones on the left side um, are more original and uh, we believe that to be uh, possibly from the tree that fell that some of those things were replaced. It looks like a pretty good job, but I think they've been replaced in that area. Uh, 3.1, uh, again, you can see a little bit there, uh, same thing in, in the uh, photograph too, but go ahead, Dave. Yeah, so on the, the west or the front of the house and then the driveway side, the south elevation, the cornice there has definitely been either replaced or restored. Someone did a nice job and really only left the north side of the house facing the Langdon and then the back side of the house facing the back of the lot. So we intend to sort of employ that same theory all the way around um, and just uh, preserve all of the cornice, as much siding, as much trim as possible. We've only shown you a few photos of what we've cataloged, but we've cataloged all the dimensions so we know sills, we know back bands, we know casing. Um, on this elevation, again, we're looking to remove 18 inches on the mansion, siding to just expose that sill. Uh, this side and the north side facing the Langdon have the basement windows, which we're proposing to replace with Marvin, we'll speak to a little bit later. Um, and then again, all trim and siding will be restored, preserved as best as possible as we go through it. And then this bay is going to get the flat seam copper. Yep, the bay will get a flat seam copper roof. And again, the trim and everything, windows will receive the same treatment as everything else. And on 3.2 is a detailed uh, trim uh, section through the new proposed round room design. Uh, this windows have been scheduled in Marvin clad. Um, we're looking at uh, using the clad doors as well. Uh, and we're doing a standing seam copper roof at that uh, in that location. All of this new foundation work will have the granite stone veneer to match the existing as closely as possible. There is a prior veneer approved on the previous application, so we're not amending that. We're just using the previously approved material for foundation uh, treatment. Um, the existing dormer on the mansion will be relocated three feet to the right uh, up against the rafter, which I think we looked at while we were up in that attic area. There's uh, the, uh, the timber, uh, and that's as far as we can go uh, to abut the timber, and that works, that works really fine for getting that um, overhang up over the window you can see below there. Um, 
So, and um, Dave, is there anything in particular that you wanted to add to this elevation? Or no, I think we're good. We're good. Same, same basic approach. Uh, moving on to 3.3. Um, this is again the mansion side, uh, and we are adding the Marvin clad windows in the uh, areaways because of moisture and the issues that have that we've had there. Um, this structural report and a lot of our photos that we'll get to later show significant rot and decay in the um, mansion framing, which will be repaired and um, and. Uh, uh, there, there's a structural approach that Dave can speak to for that. Um, uh, on this sidewall, there's a significant bow that needs to be addressed as well, Dave, correct? Yeah. So By this chimney. We've done some more investigative work, and this doesn't change our, our scope or our process, but just to, we, we now know what's happening on this north wall. Um, I don't know why I couldn't figure out earlier, but in the double parlor on the first floor, it has, if you were there, it has window wells that go into each window. Mm -hmm. Well, that constitutes an exterior wall and then an interior wall, and that's what frames out the window well or a 14 inch deep wall. Well, as we opened up sections of that interior wall, the exterior wall has been getting water for, I don't know how many years but you haven't been able to see it because there's another interior wall that doesn't allow you to see any of that. It's been hitting the, the sill beam and then going back out. So what's happened is we've actually had members give way behind this chimney mm -hmm. and the way the roof is framed, we have a king post coming down that supports the ridge for that uh, hip. And those two hip rafters are pushing down on the king post, which is part of what's let go on the back wall. So now that floor system is pushing out the box bay mm -hmm. or the uh, box beam on the first floor. So does not change our approach. Some of this, it's just gonna have to stay, um, but I would still like to remove the siding and, and get a flat, get this thing flashed and put back together the way it should be. Um, again, replacing siding in kind, trim would stay. Um, and handle this side with kid gloves uh, as best as possible. Okay. It's been a journey. <laughs> so looking at 4.0, uh, we've done um, exhaustive uh, analysis on the cornice dimensions so that we can make these two uh, elements meet. Uh, harmoniously on the inside corners as they will need to. Um, Dave has taken these exhaustive measurements up on the ladder because I'm not going up there. And uh, the photograph on the right here uh, indicates um, the, the profiles that are depicted. And uh, here we have a K-style gutter, which we thought we're still using copper but we believe that the K-style gutters are a better match to the profiles um, and the intent of, of what's happening here. So obviously water management is a huge, huge part of our task at hand here. Um, so this is the existing cornice on the mansion. Uh, looking at the existing cornice on the annex, uh, again, detailed measurements drafted up and then a photograph depicting. You can see some of these uh, trim boards uh, directly behind the gutter <clears throat> and most likely been put on to augment gutter installation and so forth. Um, so uh, one of the things that uh, surprised me was the height of, if you look on 4.2, the Mansion Eve has a pretty high rise on it. Uh, to begin with, which I found um, a little bit surprising. Um, the addition of the uh, one inch rigid insulation doesn't even really seem to, in, in this, using this method, doesn't seem to make much of a, of a impact on the eave height. Uh, so what we've done is put the two, analyze the two pieces, put them together, modeled them, um, and drew lines across so that there is a, somewhat of a seamless um, meeting of the two. They're very different. They're supposed to be different. 
um, but I think they the they can line up with and share some lines in this way um, so the trim on the inside corner I think helps that uh, so that's our our approach for the two cornices intersecting uh, clearly the dentals on the mansion are superior and uh, to the uh, to the smaller trim which exists on the annex so the annex has a more subordinate profile although the dentals are large but the profile itself I think overall Carla could I ask a question sure yeah um, I'm wondering if the if uh, anybody has thought that possibly the rafter tails on the annex have been cut off um, I mean I'm looking at gosh you've got you know, two and three quarters, four inches for the K style. Underneath there is four and three eighths, and then you have another two and three eighths. So you, you've got 12 inches of, of a, a plum cut, um, mm -hmm. which yeah, indicates to me that at one time maybe there was rot there. Possibly. They shortened because um, it's. I think it's quite awkward, and. Um, the gutters help the well the mitigate. gutters help but then they don't help in the fact that they present that flat you know dimension underneath them mm -hmm. I, I would almost like to see uh, in one in one of your drawings on I think it's 4-0 mm -hmm. you've got some kind of molding underneath the there K is style. On the, you're right on the mansion eve on 4.2 if you look to the left the mansion eve does have a, an applied piece of trim which could be carried it does all the way around take some of the sting I out agree. of that gutter i agree um, we could stipulate that yeah uh, so that was just my comment it just seems like a an awful mm -hmm. um lot of fascia there <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm just not used to it mm -hmm. Yeah, I was surprised it wasn't more noticeable from the ground. Um, moving on to 5.0, we have uh, created some 3D images uh, showing the final um, restored intent. Um, and 5.1, again, the image showing the round room and the restored sidewall and the um, annex construction within the current footprint with the exception of a, a small kitchen extension um, again 5.2 the final result uh, with the reinstalled <coughs> trim and windows restored windows and 5.3 the north elevation uh, looking much as it does in the picture on the left um, on 6.0 uh, Dave has brought some samples of the roofing for you to for us to just pass along. Dave, if you want to just pass them along to the board. Um, and we are proposing all the slate as we discussed in our work sessions, which I haven't mentioned yet. The roof will need to be removed so that it can be um, insulation can be inst installed and all the structural work below can be done based on the things that Dave has been talking about so uh, the desire is to reinstall um, the Brava roofing material where would you like it good question see it pass around. yeah pass it around okay. unless it's really heavy you want to explain <laughs> first Dave I'll explain yeah we, we looked at a lot of different companies we landed on Brava for several reasons one is it's a pressure mold versus an injection mold what does that mean uh, partially means that the color goes all the way through the product so if it were to be cut we're not looking at uh, virgin uh, PVC or, or recycled plastic second is allows them to have several molds so there are different profiles so it's not just a stamped product that you get the same profile on everything so they are slightly different third is they have solid back tiles and open web tiles this allows it to go over a non-vented roof which is what we will have or a hot roof because there is no way to vent this roof so it allows uh, this allows to go over a non-vented roof but the solid tiles allow you to have a real looking shingle along your rake edges your cut valleys for copper you're not seeing open webs you're not applying a piece of trim 
Uh, so that's what we landed on. Uh, the color is going to be the white Arendelle. I brought three just to show you that there's different profiles. If you don't need them, I won't pass them all around. But I also have a piece of the original. Oh, you need to, um, if you're talking, you need to make sure that you talk oh, into just a grab microphone that somewhere. Hand <laughs> No disc jockey uh, imitation. Yeah, this is outside my comfort zone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. Um, I also have a piece of the original slate, 12 inch uh, slate that came off of the house. It is heavy. Thank you. For color, color match. So the uh, on 6.0. Uh, we have an example of the flat seam copper that's proposed for the uh, bay areas and some of the original uh, smaller roofs on the mansion. The standing seam copper would be implemented on the round area only and on the little kitchen extension um, area. Skylights are merely to replace existing skylights that are already installed. We're not proposing any new ones. Um, and again, the K-style gutter and round Copper downspouts is the pr preference of the um, of the owners, um, and for just the way that it the style. And we would entertain the idea of bringing the mansion um, molding piece around the um, entire eave line. Uh, Dave also has. Uh, well, I'll go through these materials, and then I'll have Dave talk to you about the shutters and the screens. Um, the Marvin clad ultimate door again would only be used on the round area and uh, the brick that we would use on the chimney is the the Morin water struck. So I have a question Carl. I hate sure. to, you know we're looking at roofing and, and maybe you shouldn't oh. advance on. Okay. Um, what about the exposure on this thing? This is a huge exposure and we just compared the the old marks on the old slate, and they're at least two inches less than this roughness, which I assume is the exposure mark. Um, is there is there another Brava that doesn't have a 12-inch exposure or whatever? Whatever this is. They they actually make it uh, longer for different exposures, but there is uh, a recommended overlap, so you do have the ability to adjust the overlap. Or the exposure on that tile. No, oh, you can. So you can actually go down below where the uh, rough edge is, so to speak. Correct. And there is a minimum tolerance. I don't want to quote it, uh, but it's there is uh, the ability to adjust the exposure. And part of that was done for reason of different pitches coming in and having the caps. Um, but there is a tolerance for what your exposure, what they have for exposure on that. And it is a screwed down product too, as well. It goes in those little circles, I take it? Correct. Thank you very much. And actually, I, I believe it's four, with four screws, you meet the next wind load, which is yeah. Miami. Hurricane you know, proof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So sorry. I'm sorry to, you know, we just I go had back? some questions. <coughs> Do you want me to go back? Um, yeah, what were you uh, on the standing seam? Or? I was just, yes, I yeah. was on standing seam and flat seam. So. I mean, we pretty well understand that. I think. Okay. Is that a, a one inch standing seam? Uh, yes. Yes, it's custom, but I'll make a note of that. That's usually what I spec. First bend's inch and a half, second bend's inch and a quarter, and then you're at one. Okay. That's a, if you're doing custom. That's I would think how you do it. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's lots of that around. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, as I said, K style gutter. We would offer to extend that trim around that's currently present on the mansion, um, and then the skylights are only for the purpose of replacing existing skylights that are there. Um, and uh, I think that covers the materials on 6.0. On 6.1, we've uh, called out the Morin Waterstruck Brick, which would be used in the chim any chimney work 
Um, the Marvin Ultimate, Clad Ultimate is only for use in the new round room construction, nowhere on the historic building or the, um, or the annex. Um, and then uh, the Beach River Mill is going to be matching existing shutters that are not uh, salvageable. And I guess, Dave, did you want to add anything? I mean, you don't I, I have mean, to. Yeah. And uh, also the screen. I'll talk very quickly. Waterstruck brick is pretty much a staple in restoration work. It's also a kind of uh, unique to New England, if you will. Beach River, they've been in business for over 150 years. They've done a few projects for us. They're great. They have a, a Victorian era workshop. It's been modernized, but it's a really cool facility. Um, they do outstanding work. We ended up on Marvin because Although their product, the custom storm, doesn't necessarily fit an eastern styled uh, or eastern cased window, it's more narrow than anything else we found outside of just straight up custom making it ourselves. And it works well with the thicker uh, window trim that we have. So that's why we ended up with the Marvin custom uh, storms. That's all. Right. A question about your choice of the Morin brick. Have you cleaned off enough of the mansion chimneys to feel that these are going to go well, or do you feel that because it's the addition chimney, it doesn't have to match or resemble the mansion chimney? Uh, the, no, we haven't cleaned off any of the uh, chimneys uh, on the mansion. Um, in the limited experience that I have, we've used the water struck like over on Market Street. That's an 1820s building, and that meshed well color-wise. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I would be certainly open to a stipulation as once we clean off the brick to make sure color-wise that we're you know we're being appropriate. Our intent is to water seal the brick once it's done with the salt guard. So we clearly do not want patchwork on this thing. It, it needs to look seamless. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, could I ask you, David, what is the uh, material of those Beach River shutters? Um, Are they we, primed pine or? No. Uh, for right now, we're discussing Spanish cedar. To be honest, it's going to be a, a, a painted product, but that's really what they do most of their, their shutters out of. So it would be a cedar. Stability. Well, yes, yeah, stability. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't um, expand and contract as much, even though it's a painted product. Yeah. Um, There's nothing more disappointing than I have used Brosco pine shutters <laughs> that come prime and then mm -hmm. look at them eight years later, seven years later, and see the rot, especially on the bottom style. And, you know, mm -hmm. basically you have to take the shutters apart to fix them. It's, it's just, that's why I was interested in material. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we could. Uh, submit an admin uh, color match approval. It could be a stipulation that we submit the Morn admin uh, as a color match once we have a cleaned off good, you know, representation of what's there. Um, that could be subject to admin approval once we can actually assess what it is. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on. All right, um, moving on to 6.2, the double hung Marvin Wood Ultimate would be used anywhere that we have indicated that there is a vinyl window currently installed, for instance, in the dormer of the mansion house or any place there is not an original window to be restored. And then again, we're going to plan on using the um, clad ultimates in both all the basement um, applications for moisture in, in everywhere and uh, the, the clad ultimates would just be in the round room only and that's on the window schedule um, looking at 7.0 we're just trying to provide as many reference photos uh, as possible just to kind of <coughs> see all the elevations in one place um, and then if you look at 7.1 you can see uh, the photo to the far right indicates the uh, timbers that were modified um, and cut during the um, annex um, installation. You can see it's bearing on about a half inch there. 
uh, and then the photos to the left start to give you a fee, uh, an indication of what happened to the interior um, during the 1980s uh, work in the attic of the mansion house. Um, moving on to 7.2, there's a summary of the uh, moisture problems that Dave has been uncovering pretty regularly um, that have caused a great deal of rot and damage to the beams. I know we saw a lot of that on our walkthroughs uh, with the board and with many of our historians. Um, and our ultimate goal, if Dave is able to remove that lower uh, siding and repair all of the rot behind there and then uh, restore or replace that as needed, uh, we're planning on lowering this grade so that this doesn't continue. So we give the house a little breathing room. Uh, 7.3, um, basically uh, shows uh, some of the annex, what was what has been done in the annex, and you, I believe, also saw this on the walkthrough. And then 7.4 is just a corrective from the prior approval. Um, and then if we go quickly, through, I'm not going to go spend a whole bunch of time on this, but because I know you have other. Yeah. Dave has pretty much summarized his work scope during the presentation, so we'll just skip through that. Um, and then I just want to highlight a couple of photos in the structural evaluation. Um, if this, oh, if you stop there, right there, go back one. <coughs> back, back one. Uh, looking at the column bases, actually, are those further down? Those are further down. Far, sorry, Nick, I'm wrong. Forward. That's the column base that needs to be restored. Um, we're going to utilize the one with the tape on it as a pattern. And if you keep going in Dave's report, you can see the PVC um, that he's proposing. So I just keep kind of going to almost, is it almost at the end, Dave? Yeah. 103 like the last sheet. And can I confirm that um, if you use PVC for that, it will there be it is. Sorry. painted there it is. in yes. the field. To painted. Yep. So that the, Absolutely. Yeah. Great. So the yes. texture will match. Yes. Yes, the unpainted is not a color I want to see. Yep. Are you removing the bricks all around this, uh, the mansion? Yes, there's like a little walkway or something that's been. I'm wondering if that's part of the problem. I don't know how long that's been in there, but geez. It almost looks like it's leaning backwards on uh, on one of the pages. Yeah, it has to. That has to all be proper drainage must <laughs> be restored, or we're just wasting our efforts here. Sure, somebody thought it was. A so, if you look at page three of Gorham's structural report, which is after there's Dave's bases, so this is structural. Um, if you keep uh, right there, that is the uh, the uh, uncovering of the dirt that the wood that the annex is installed right on top of and then there's a little area where so you can see it's just sitting on the ground in that photo um, and then uh, I think that's about it uh, the structural report goes on to sort of outline the foundation and and certain and other recommendations but I'm not going to read this to you you've got it in your packet um, and you've all seen it and then we had a, a Stephen Mallory, the conservator, um, has done a report who, and he has helped us identify the areas on the annex that should be preserved and saved and, um, you know, re reinstalled. So I think if anyone has any questions, um, anything I've missed or. Okay. I have one question. Certainly. Yep. So, Carlo, the, um, when you take off the annex, mm -hmm. the annex has another uh, attachment to it, which is the dog trot connector that goes out yes. to the other. Yes. What are the plans to just stabilize that, keep it there, and build right up against it? That or? has actually been approved for demolition in the original approval. The previous approval has approved that little dog leg area for mm -hmm. demolition. So what we're showing on these plans is the 
previously approved new construction that was um, approved for that area. But um, that's that's very good. Dave had um, asked me that very question. <laughs> Mr. Um, so Chairman, can uh, I yes. just jump in? Mr. I think pertinent to this. It, is, this seems like to me a new thing, and, and I'm just wondering how to wrap my head around it. It, it the previous uh, previously approved but not enacted it is yeah. which which is it i mean do you understand what i'm getting at well, i understand it is previously approved yeah but not enacted it but yeah. it didn't get done well right. it is there is a, a permit though for time period are, it's there throughout is, all of our law there is a year for um, the permit to to do the thing so uh, i mean you yeah, you have a permit but it, it seems yes. to make sense to me uh, like Dave and I'm just the administrator here but it makes mm -hmm. sense to me yeah there's a building permit but clearly the project is more than substantially changing with this application that it would make sense that it be spelled out very clearly what what you're assuming is previously approved okay and, and what you're wanting to request mm -hmm. so everybody here doesn't have to ask well, gee what yeah. what's really happening here that you're not talking about because it may be something that was approved with the previous approval first of all had half the members that are here not here yeah. because it was two or three years ago mm -hmm. too long uh, but the, the the totality of the project has changed that it may not be any longer appropriate to initiate that portion of the project that hasn't started well yes i agree i mean i agree with what you're saying and i do um understand that i guess one of the benefits that or the uh, issues that the previous approval did not wasn't available to them was some of this demolition that we've been able to do to uncover some of these problems plus the mansion uh, and the annex were not really the focus of um, you know a great deal of uh, exploratory work and we've been very thorough and careful on that so we've sort of uncovered a lot more than we thought we were going to i, I get that yeah and i think the so owners, i agree i think the owners if they would have done that would have come back here and amended their application mm -hmm. so you're really amending a previously approved application it needs to be clear what right what what's in here at right. least to me so in the in the previously approved it was for demolition then but something else was being reconstructed right there was a new reconstruct yeah, yeah. Well, was a new, put a new a whole well, wait, new the connector. pool isn't being added no, anymore no, I'm, I'm, I mean no. there's all kinds of things that are also being taken away you so it see. doesn't make any sense to me the more <laughs> I think about it that you can right. cherry pick from one and remove things from the other well we're not going to i mean i'm just i don't really we can do whatever you like i can preserve the connector in this application if you like that can be preserved okay. and not part of this it isn't really part of this application okay. yes. so if we are going to take all of what is not part that wasn't part of this application to so it can later. still not be we so can we preserve it <clears throat> and you've said it and that's what's going to happen then right if that's right. how you like that if you'd like us to start over when we begin phase two, which is a whole other yeah. thing, then that's fine. And we can just not be utilizing the demolition from the prior approval. We'll just preserve that. No, you're going to change that because you said you're not going to have the indoor outdoor swimming pool, which. Well, no, yes. Which true. was kind of a cool thing. <laughs> I. <laughs> Um, but at that well, point, I just haven't so much really elapsed. Yeah. Yeah. gotten deeply into you know that approval, which is not in progress yet. Right. So I'm kind of like not super prepared to wing it. Yeah. <laughs> I know oh, on you know, what the what plan is there. That's, that's fine. Okay. I think by you stating that that is just not going to be, yeah. that's not part of this application, and everything is just going to be Correct. kept frozen there, frozen. Back. Then that's fine. That's fine. That right works up. for me. Um, so we were questioning any other questions here mr. Adams um, I, it's unclear in your your overhead drawing again it's scale that we're being operating this at um, that you're moving the center dormer on the back uh, plane of the roof of the main building yes that three is feet. on page uh, it's three feet over uh, just when I look at it on the drawing it does not look anywhere near like three feet now all I've got is a piece of paper in my oh. eyeball squinting but okay it's been uh, it's been field verified I mean, it can't it can't go any farther than that rafter, and it works um, to move three feet in that direction, and it abuts 
trying to see if I can find a photo. 3.2. The, the, the place that I was looking at it in, mm -hmm. uh, damn, you know, I uh, was uh, on 7.4. Okay. There's an overhead. Again, this is a in the photo. brutally large scale. I mean, or small scale, excuse me. Oh, oh, I think that's showing just existing. Yes, that's just so the existing. That's existing. So yeah. w what, where is the drawing that shows us with it moved then? 3.2. 3. 3. 3. 3.2, thank you very much. Um, next question, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. it, it, I, I've noticed in your models uh, subtle differences in the balustrade on the roof, uh, sometimes elevation, sometimes the size of the skirt, sometimes with and without brackets that go to the roof, sometimes with and without finials. Is there a consensus on that? The widow's walk that's up there is going to be removed and reinstalled. It is not original, but it's going to be retained. The <laughs> thing that's there now, which is not historic, will be will be uh, kept. It's in perfect condition. It's brand new. So we're going to put it right back. Okay. So to, to answer Dave's question, I, if, I think I remember the back side of that of that widow's walk rail is a completely different look than what's at the front oh, it's it, it's very cheap it's mm. just okay um and, and that's what i when i looked out that's what i saw something was very there? different in the different. back than there was in the front mm -hmm. yeah, it was i think it was historically installed only on the front someone who walked through had told us that but i can't recall exactly it, it who. was done recently yeah they yeah. just yeah uh, it, there was nothing up there, and I think. Well, no, well, it had been broken, and there were balusters broken. missing. So they, they and restored um, it. somebody from Hingham that came Dave, up. And Dave's been up there, so. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could probably find the date. It was originally just on the front of the building. Uh, it was extended to all four sides, and we did have it. Oh, here you go. 2014 yeah. is when they extended the Whittle Walk to all four sides. I would be. If I've missed that detail, I'd be surprised, Margo, but I believe it's all the same balustrades, top uh, top rail, but I could be wrong. I was looking out of a space about that thing. Yeah. The, the intent is uh, whoever did it did a nice job, but like anything else in New England, it's out of pine, so it just needs to come off, be prepped, painted. It has to come off for the roof anyways, and then it will go back on. We're, we're not intending to change it, just paint it and put it back up good we understand okay. um, any more questions uh, uh, the existing building has copper hips on its slate roof um, is it your intention to replace those copper hips yep. yeah copper hips and pallets because um, earlier there was a mention about the sh slates the f using the full size slates slate like material um, on the hips so where you wouldn't have to you want to use the solid material there because it wouldn't show the waffle uh, pattern of the cuts. Mm -hmm. Which, and so that made me think, why would you be putting slate on the hips if you're putting copper on the hips? Uh, that was just factoring into our decision making process why we selected them. A lot of the other vendors, you actually have to use a trim piece because mm -hmm. they're all open back. So whenever you go into a valley or, uh, or a hip or a rake, you have to add a thick trim piece to hide. So using those slates not to cap the hip, but as as the sh last shingle to the hip. Correct. Yes. Thank you very much. These are, mm. See, this is all point of question you and answer. This, now. <laughs> this could be your new business. <laughs> you <guys. laughs> I you hope not. Um, and the next one is, uh, did, did, were you aware of how thick the slate that you've provided is, the replica slate? It is thicker. Uh, there are varying thicknesses of the slate that's up there. It's not as thick as the bottom exposure of the one that we've provided. Um, but it does vary on some of the slate. And I, I can't tell. We spoke with a couple different contractors of what the original thickness of that slate is. I mean, most, if you buy it now, it's quarter inch. But there's certainly pieces on the original roof that are you know, three eighths, half inch. That's closer to five eighths. Um, and it would be everyone. Correct. Yep. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Karen, your hand. Uh, yes, I, I, I just want to confirm that you are planning to replace the chimney in the annex. 
you got to yes. rebuild that. Okay. Oh, yes. In kind. Thank you. Good bricks. Uh, anyone else? Yes. Richard. Thank you, Chair. Um, I want to thank you guys for all the work. This, I mean, there's a lot of detail in here. You guys have clearly done a lot of work. Um, and this is a very important house, obviously, for Portsmouth Historic District. It's a very prominent and center stage. Um, so we want to make sure we do our due diligence here. My only question, I guess, was on the, now that we're meeting the cornices from the annex to the mansion, mm -hmm. um, and I know Chairman brought this up earlier, that dental work, mm -hmm. I mean, is it, does it, is it possible to match that all around, or is that something that would, that isn't historically accurate, it isn't? I think we decided that preserving the history of the two pieces and yeah, connecting was, them as harmoniously as possible was just our best best step forward, you know, keeping keeping the profiles but just sort of matching them up, matching the the uh, eaves, matching some of them. Some of them matched closer than I anticipated they would. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of our we want to retain the original um, sort of subordinate primary. Yeah, yeah, and I can see that how it's, yeah. it keeps the, the main mansion dominant. Mm -hmm. um, no, the, and then the uh, only other concern would be the fact that the, the little part coming off the annex that we uh, Margo mentioned, yes. um, that would, doesn't really. Concern. Yes, we're fine with that. I mean, you know, it's, it's yeah, and I understand in a that. process. Yeah. Anyone else share Councilor uh, Blaylock's concern or is there any other questions in general? I have some comments. Martin, go to um, I think it's terrific uh, what you're doing. It's it's a first class uh, restoration, renovation, um, adaption. Uh, I am disappointed with the slate, though. I got to say that, you know, I thought that you were going to retain the slate, at least on the mansion portion of it. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going so far into the restoring the windows and restoring some of the features, the clapboards, the you know, <coughs> would you consider keeping the slate? I mean, we, I, I think it's such an important element of the house. Mm. And, um, do you mean it, using new real slate? Yeah. Using real genuine slates. I know. I just, I just feel like you, you've gone that far to, to restore the mansion that by cheating it with the, with the plastic slate, mm. You're cheating it. Um, I, I would just, I would just think that you're. I don't know if you're doing it to add that one inch, inch of insulation, which is really not going to get you a lot. I, I assume that you're going to insulate the bulk of the roof to meet energy codes from the inside. Mm -hmm. So, if you could do everything you're doing, yeah, and and put real slate on the main house. I'd say that you have, you know, grade A class restoration preservation. Mm -hmm. um, I think the weight was a consideration from engineering. I'm not sure without him here exactly how much impact that is. Uh, and the continuous rigid, I think, is necessary with all the timbers we have in that uh, area, the timbers <coughs> and the purlins. And, and all the sistering we're going to have to do, there's going to be a lot of telescoping through with all of that. Um, so I think that was the basis of the decision. Um, just, it just, it, it's, just, uh, it's just painful mm. to see you go that far and not go that one last mile. Mm. Martin, I don't want to uh, take the floor. I certainly, you know, I want you to continue. But I would also say, um, <clears throat> so, the building was designed back in 1793 mm -hmm. for the slate roof, mm -hmm. and it held the weight of that slate roof up until right now. Um, you're going to have this all opened. I know that your structural engineer is going to be sure mm -hmm. that this roof is going to be beefed up sub substantially because we saw a number of elements cut away and haphazard framing, so to speak. So you have all the time and the option in the world to put that thing up to 200 pounds a square foot or whatever. That roof, you, you can do it. So I 
Uh, all I'm saying is um, that your argument mm -hmm. against using slate because of the weight uh, doesn't ring true. Mm. And I'm going to let Mar uh, Martin keep Well, I, I think I, I pushed as far. I mean, if you were, and it troubles <clears throat> me that, you know, I don't expect the annex necessarily to be full slate. I mean, mm -hmm. it would be great. It would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and then matching. Uh, but it, so. I got to think that it's just a little disappointing that, that you haven't done that one last mm. piece. So what do we think? What do you think? Slate? What do you think? I don't know, I'm trying to get this moving. I know, I mean, I would, I would certainly love to see real slate used. Um, I don't know if we can hear any more about that, that option or decision, but um, mm -hmm. I, I also, I don't know how well it would work to use real slate on the main house and the fake slate on the back. That's, I think that you'd have to, have to do you the can whole match thing. It. You, can. Of mine. you yeah. can You can mm -hmm. You can match it. Yeah. Yes. Guaranteed. So we have a few other people over here on the other side because if this is going to be a deal breaker, then is it? Mr. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I do think because this is such a focal point, mm. this is front and center stage. I mean, you drive down from City Hall, that is the building you're looking at. Um, you know, I mean, you see that before you see the governor's mansion. Um, and I, th I think, yeah, putting that and like holding that, it just feels so just genuine. Um, I don't know what it would look like. But I, I, but I know that's obviously, I don't know. I'd be uncomfortable with the fake slate, I think, on the main mansion. Mark? Well, I have a straw vote. <laughs> I'm always in support of original materials. Okay, David? I, I'd go so far as to say that I'm, I'm, I'm as bothered by the, the, the fact that they want to strip the whitewash off the chimneys. This, uh, to me, this whole... This thing's run aground for me. I, I, I love the idea of what they want to do, but this is just run aground. I don't, I don't think much of the slate situation because it's just, whether it's the air slate or not, it's, it's just unnaturally thick. And there may be thick pieces, but they mostly aren't. Um, I, I've had problem with being old and having done this sort of thing for 50 some years is I've had way too much of the slate in my hands to know. Yeah. Um, uh, you sure I, that's whitewash on those chimneys? The whitewash, you know, you, you, you mentioned that. painter in the world hasn't gone up there and glopped over another coat of paint on Oh, in, including me a couple yeah. of times. And the, the window, the, uh, the Langdon house next door and, and the, uh, oh, God, the Wendell house. On, I mean, yeah. how many of these houses have painted chimneys? They've been painted for a long, long time. The paintings came in with the black slate roof, the, the colonial buildings that they were building had natural brick on wood shingle roofs. We hadn't actually started importing that much slate then. But by the, by the, by the 1800s, it's the full industry of it. And everybody in the process of re-roofing their buildings put slate on because it was the killer material. And they spruced up the chimneys because yeah. they didn't want them to look shabby like they used to, so they whitewashed them. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to support this application just simply because of the work that they're doing to the roof line of the dependency the okay. addition. Right. So they have it. Yeah, so there you have it. Um, anyone else? If, if I may real quick, yeah. Chair. Um, we would be willing to uh, stick with original material, put slate on the roof, um, and strike the synthetic out of the application. Uh, Okay, I will there. tell you that <laughs> after nothing short of probably 20 some odd phone calls, finding a slate roofer that uh, is a skilled craftsman that will show up day after day is exceedingly difficult and that was a yeah. huge part of the decision quite frankly. Yeah. Uh, no, you're not going to get the Massachusetts company coming up with uh, an entire village of uh, people. Uh, that's going to do the roof in two days. No. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah, understood. No, that's not yeah. It's, you got to start looking in New York and and some of these other areas. But uh, we would we would be agreeable to. Now, I did speak with a couple different people, and there is no certainty with taking the slate. Uh, correct me, Dave, if I'm wrong. It's it's black. Um, the slate that's up there it begins with an M. Matinicus. Thank you. Um, 
there, there's no certainty that the slate coming off the roof is going to come off and be able to be reused. Oh. The other challenge is that type of slate, as I am told, is no longer currently mined, but they do have some that are stockpiled in areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are what boiled into this decision. We but understand that. We will, we will yeah. source, and there could be an administrative approval, we'll source uh, yeah. new slate and, right. and bring it to you. But you have to well, understand we have a majority of, of mm -hmm. the board. Well, and um, I'm, I'm assuming you've talked to someone at South Church who they just put on a whole new They did a whole new roof. Yep. Oh. Uh, not someone at South Church. I talked with um, Old Mohawk, uh, who they consulted on that project. Uh, th they'd be a great company out of Melrose, Mass, who we'd love to hire, but we have to wait, I think, three or four years. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, there's a challenge there, but we'll, we'll go ahead and take on that challenge. The last piece that just caught me off guard, Dave, was the, the whitewashing of the chimney. I didn't know that was a, um, a sticking point, and uh, quite frankly, I never even considered. Uh, keeping it. We just figured the healthy thing for the mortar was to reinstate the chimney as it was in its natural state. So, I, I, Everybody's got their own view of things. Yeah, Absolutely. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, when I was thinking about that, the painted chimney as well, and I think that you could make the case either way, in my opinion, to r remove the coating. What, and, and I'm glad that you have been talking to an expert with removing the coatings because um, what can happen is even with a very sensitive process like the sponge jet or whatever you come out and and that that glazing that natural glazing from the firing process is removed from the surface of the brick and that's just going to make huge problems down the road and 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 it may be that the paint has already done that damage so you'll have to put another coating on it um, and I think that you could use a, a, a white or, you know, um, restore the color that's on there now or um, use the Prosoco sealant to really seal it up. So is there any other questions? Could I open this up to the public then? Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak about this project? Hello? Dick Bagley. 213 Pleasant, the abutter, and um, I've been following the work. I've talked to the owner. Um, David has been over to talk to my wife. I've met and talked with Brad, who's doing a lot of the work at this stage. I've tr I have a good deal of confidence in the people that have been brought in from Strawberry Bank and Athenaeum to understand um, the nature of what was done but I think I hear some things that are inconsistent with what the Historic District Commission should be doing, which is this isn't really a preservation or a restoration. This is a new home. If you look at the finished product, this you could see this all over Manchester by the Sea in Massachusetts. It is the idiosyncratic history is what makes the house really interesting. We look at the south side. Five years ago, we took down the maple trees. So that jog that covers up, apparently, some window that was in the mansion is, I understand that you want to sort of fix that. But the Historic Commission is about the outside, not in the inside. And I understand the stair situation. We've known the Salufos in the 15 years that we've been there, and we knew the Wongs. And I have to agree with the comment that came over here. And, and I don't think, I, I think these, people are great people. I think the people that are working on it are great people. I just think that it does deserve a comment. And that's all I'm really trying to say here. I am concerned that the Wongs made the application. You're not revising the Wongs application. You're dealing only with the mansion and the annex. Most of what the Wongs did were on the carriage house in the back, which is not, you know, we don't really know the date of the carriage house. They wanted to expand the carriage house in the back. I worked with Nick on the widow's walk, and the whole argument was the widow's walk in the front was original, so it didn't really need a match in the back. And, and then Nick will remember that uh, the Salufos didn't want to do it at all, and they were going to just let it fall down. And uh, there's a lot of history here. 
at one point this property was going to be div uh, divided and 11 condominiums were going to be built on it. And then the city sort of stepped in and sort of said, well, we don't think so. And so uh, the intent, I think, of our good new neighbors are, is great. I, th I would have preferred, I've done this before with historic homes, I'd prefer you lift it, put a new foundation under it, and leave the jog as it is and keep the original viewpoint as it is, certainly retaining the original slate. The, there is a worker. That, that slate is not readily available, but there was the Salufos did fix the, the annex slate by bringing in somebody from Maine. Um, but it's a huge job, and one of the things that the Salufos did learn at the time is that the structure of the annex is such that you wouldn't want to use new slate on it. So that's a little bit of the history of... Thank you. And what I'm worried about is, at the end of the day, I'm not here to complain. I'm not here to say that, that anybody's doing anything wrong. I just would prefer that the original vision of a historic home is what you should be capturing as a historic district commission. And what I'm even more worried about is, in my mind, you're, build, you're taking some pieces off and you're putting them back on. It's a new home and it's being redesigned. And you're not going through the normal new home process. So I would have to agree with the comment. I think you, what happens to the original uh, Wong proposal? Is it still there for the carriage house? I'm concerned about the carriage no, house. Or does it all go away and start, start all over again? Is it's that what it is, Nick? because uh, it was over two years ago and they never came back and renewed it. I see. So it expires. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, that's well, it uh, for that, but uh, we understand your comments for yeah, the building. My biggest concern is, is, you know, on Richmond Street, which was originally part of the property, that's been going on for 15 years, yeah. and it's still not completed, and there's nothing the city can do. And even though the permits run out, there are, as you know, there, there's a, you, you're not denied the right to come back in and reopen it all up again. So I just, I, you know, I, I don't want this to become a brick market. No all over again, and we know what that's done to that street. And so I, I think there's good intentions involved here. I'd prefer you keep the original vision of a historic home. That's what a historic commission is here for. If you decide to rebuild it, make the owners go through the approval process of every material as you would do for a new home. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else in the public? What do you say, Nick? Hang on. Out there. Online. No one appears to have their hand up. So. Okay. So I'm going to close this um, public hearing and uh, look for a motion, discussion, whatever, and let's get this going. Well, I'd, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, this application. Uh, with the stipulation that the the roof, uh, I guess we're going to look at the roof as a as a natural slate should be used and a sample submitted for administrative approval. How's that? Correct. Um, and the color match of the Morin brick will also be submitted mm -hmm. for administrative approval. Right. Could we change that stipulation slightly to have it be an on-site brick sample? Okay. Oh, like a mock-up, or I think so. Mason can yep. throw one together pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. It takes care of brick, it takes brick spacing, mortar, it, all of those things, all in one package. Yep. Thank okay. you. So Thank you very much. <clears throat> but I just, I just wanted to add that I greatly appreciate the fact that you're willing to to accommodate that request of the slate, natural slate. Um, I think that's going to take a terrific project. To, and, and just make it even better. Um, this is going to serve as an example of, of how to properly do the, a home of this nature, of this size, this importance. And so um, my findings of fact. Um, Did we I have a second? Do, do you need a second first? Did we have a second? No. We didn't I don't know if you'd finished his motion. All right. Yeah. Somebody want to make it? Yeah, well, he's starting in finding as a fact. Could we have yeah, a yeah. second? Yeah, I'll second that. Thank you very okay. much. Mm -hmm. All right. It preserves the integrity of the district and is consistent with the special and defining characters of the surrounding properties. <clears throat> Can I make a comment? Certainly, sir. Um, 
Yeah, I just want to say this is a big and difficult project. Um, this is a hard one for us to look at and go through um, because it is such a focal property. Um, it is such a great example um, of of what it is in our, you know, a, this a very important um, high style house in our district. Um, I'm going to support this. It doesn't, the decision doesn't come easily. I'm just going to say, and I appreciate Mr. Bagley's comments on how um, this is such a, um, a, a different application for what we usually see um, at, uh, at the HDC. And um, only because they have been so open in their process, they have, um, they really have tried to get the best experts come through there. I appreciate having all of us have the opportunity to go inside and outside the house, even though our purview is all outside and not inside. Um, but it helps us understand the problems, the, the vast amount of problems <clears throat> that exist in this building, which is unfortunate um, that it has gotten to this point. So um, I still think with all the problems that this structure sees, the solution that you've come up with is, pro is it seems to be the best path forward for making this um, a livable and usable house. I, again, it's, it's uh, not normal. It's a, it's a different tack than what we would usually see, but um, I think in this situation, I can, can approve this, and I appreciate that everything is going to be rebuilt mm -hmm. and as much of the original material trim and everything reused um, and so thank you all right um, so, mr. Blaylock do you have anything to add for your second or yeah uh, thank you Jim um, yeah I just like to thank the clients um, all the detail I mean just the fact that you know we talked about fixing the siding that you're not going to just fill it with uh, caulking and paint it over you know that you're actually gonna do the right thing and restore it properly and I know this is a very difficult project as Commissioner Rudick said um, I really appreciate doing the slate roof. I know that's not easy. I know you mentioned it was um, a hot roof and needed to be ventilated and, and the weight of the slate as well. So I know that's um, making the job more difficult, mm -hmm. um, but I do think it'll make a better project in the end since this is so front and center. Um, you know, I mean, every this is the, the first house a lot of people see when they drive into downtown. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I just want to thank you again for all the effort because this is a very prominent in the historic yeah. district. <clears throat> All righty. So, uh, yeah. Margo. oh, Margo, yeah. yes. Um, I, I find myself torn because, mm -hmm. as I mentioned at our last meeting, the raising of the building and, and how much taller that roof line is compared to the mansion, I had concerns about the annex no longer looking like an annex, that it was going to look not bigger than the mansion, obviously, but it would be more prominent than it was before. And the proportions were chosen when the house was built for a reason. So I appreciate you showed us new perspectives so we could take a look at what it was going to look like and you eased some of my concerns. I don't think we're doing, I don't think you're doing the wrong thing by taking the structure down and starting over again, given mm -hmm. all of the research that you've done into its current condition. But I find myself torn quite a bit as to whether raising this thing up as much as you've suggested is the right thing to do. I understand why you're doing it, but I am struggling. Um, I, I would just like to say uh, that I have never seen um, such a mansion of proportions and um, beauty in such a great location in such terrible condition. Um, the what maybe Mr. Bagley didn't get a chance to go down into the basement or what have you, but um, this house really needs the work, and uh, you people are devoted to do the work. So, um, for that reason, I'm going to support it. Um, so I guess I'll just take a regular voice vote. So uh, everybody who's in favor, say aye. 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 And those that are against, say nay. Nay. Aye. Is that two? Five two. Sounds okay, like two. Five to two. You have your permit with the 
stipulations that we've mentioned. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks, Carla. And those were great drawings. Mm -hmm. That was a good a good plan set that you submitted. Thank you. It's uh, a lot of credit to Dave. <laughs> Getting better. Investigative work. <laughs> Except for the slate. <laughs> Except for the slate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again. Yes, thank you. Yep, you too. You too. All right, so I'm, I'm moving right along. 202 Court Street, Property Group LLC owner for property located at 202 Court Street, wherein permission is requested to allow the demolition of the remaining structure to allow for the reconstruction of the firehouse as originally approved, excuse me, as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 116 as lot 35, lies within the character district 4-L1 in the historic districts. Who's here to speak on this? Good evening, uh, Matt Silva from Profile Homes. Uh, we are a Portsmouth-based uh, construction company. Recognize a lot of your faces, um, but for the essence of those that are unfamiliar with the history of us presenting in front of this board, I'll take a quick minute to sort of start from the beginning. Um, we started this process a few years back when we purchased the building with intention of um, turning it into living space. Uh, it is the original Portsmouth Fire Station, um, but 100 years prior to us um, taking ownership of the building, it was the Wright Baker Auto Garage. Um, we've worked with this board. Um, you all have been great advisors of ours, uh, sharing ideas. We went through a number of work sessions here uh, to create um, something that I think we all felt comfortable with. Uh, we came back in the fall to present to you. Uh, <clears throat> after we had done our selective demolition on the inside of the building, we realized many of the structural defects. And uh, in that process, um, working with the city, uh, on the administration side about what was right to take down and what was not. At that point in time, uh, in the fall when we had met, um, we discussed that we were trying to take down as minimal amount of the building as possible, try to save as much of what was there. Whether that was practical or not, uh, it was still our goal and it had been our goal. I think, um, I hope everybody who has been here through this process has known every time we've come before you, we've tried to find ways to save this building. Um, in fact, um, John, uh, the last time I was here, I remember when the session closed, you sort of shouted out at me as I was walking out of the room, save that building. And I whispered back, you know, we're trying to. And uh, so here we are before you tonight to say that we believe we've done everything we can to the point of embarrassment over people wondering probably what we're doing and why we're playing this game of whack-a-mole, uh, if you will, with the building. Every time we open something up, it further brings itself down the line of what it is we're trying to do. So uh, we've spent tens of thousands of dollars just to prop the building up to where it stands right now, just to sort of satisfy the fact that behind the bones of the building, behind the sheetrock and the plaster of the building, when it's redone, this structure will remain even though it's straightened. Uh, it's got to the point now that we've looked at it and we've thought they're really, this is, this is not the best use of the building. If buildings have a soul to them, then this building would rather see us repurpose it um, inside the structure specifically. Um, so recently at the request of city administration, we met with the new building inspector with a fresh view of the structure, discussing what was there. We were still in the process obviously of working to um, dismantle the foundation, start to put a new foundation under the building. Um, again, moving our staging here and there so that we could dig and start to properly try and save that building. What remains there now, though, is something that really would truly be potentially covered up. Nothing about our application from the first time we came here, the renderings that we showed you, the selections that we've made, uh, any of the details of that. If you're looking at um, the details that were submitted, you'll see there's a final rendering of what the outside structure of the building will look like. Nothing about that has changed. Um, in fact, in our hope, you know, by doing it the way that we're talking about, this is not a financial decision. This is more of a, a decision being made in the essence of um, what we should be doing in terms of speed to, to make this, this building start to perform and, and, uh, and get to its completion phase, which is frankly what it um, deserves. So 
you know, in, in how we got there, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of cap with that and certainly um, take more questions from you if, if needed. Um, I'm sure if you drive by it, you do see it has been an arduous process for us. Um, while we've tried everything that we can and try to removing and saving what parts of the structure, what we've decided and, and even come to the agreement with the people who have purchased the building is an addendum to their contract, which includes that we'll salvage what is there, but instead of keeping it hidden behind the walls as sort of it was, and that we were all stewards of what this building was going to be, that we would then be able to take that off site, save it, and then be able to bring that back in into some architectural piece so that when you were inside that building, it sort of showed more of the bones of it. It's, it's a post and beam structure, but the scattered framing that holds some of that post and beam together the way it was originally framed is really of no value. But the frame itself uh, to us kind of tells the story. Um, we've saved a lot of the material that has been um, on the project uh, as well. Um, part of the uh, partnership team that's there has uh, used it in various projects. We also um, our, uh, I, I know our uh, fire department has some uses for some of the material that they'd like to see as well for you know for, for furniture decorations and things like that. There's more in that building right now that um, we could necessarily do um, with, um, with the redesign. The discussions with the building department, of course, has also been about code compliance and what health and safety um, concerns that they would have in us um, keeping it. You know, Portsmouth is a historical city, and so the value of that is important to me, too. Um, and then it comes about the decision of, well, what's going to stand for another four or 600 years after we're all long gone? If it's putting it back on that foundation, that's probably not going to be it. If it's taking the building down in itself, um, then I believe that building should be saved. We're not trying to just build a brand new building. We want to keep what's there um, in that process. Um, you know, it will provide us with a better, you know, health, safety, welfare of what else is going on there. It makes me nervous, quite frankly, of seeing the building as it stands right now. We've weathered a few storms. Um, I'm sure we'll weather some more. That's not a deciding factor to it. Um, but in um, every professional opinion of everyone who's come out there um, without the building uh, ch chief building inspector being here himself to uh, say this, his, his point in saving the building seemed to be very minimal other than sentimental value that, um, that we have. So, um, you know, if I were to simplify uh, what it is uh, that we're here tonight to ask for, um, reluctantly in some ways, but um, I think it makes sense to the point that we've uh, we've taken it to, um, that uh, simply to uh, selectively dismantle the structure of what remains, salvage that off-site so that it can be reused inside the structure instead of hidden behind the um, uh, the walls of the structure, uh, simply so that we all know that it's there. But better yet, we would know that it's actually being used inside the building. Um, you know, that's a guarantee that we've also made to the uh, contract of the people who have purchased the structure. So. Um, we've uh, had a good relationship in taking suggestions from this board as well to anything that we would like to see. So uh, the last time we met, we talked about adding some brick to the foundation of the new structure, which is uh, obviously part of the agreement of the plan. Um, and we just want to keep what we want the same look and feel of what is there, uh, but salvaging what is there um, at, at our professional opinion at this point in time, I think we've come to a roadblock with. So. Okay. I think we all understand, kind of. Thank but, you. Um, whether we've got comments and questions here. Can I can I just say something before Certainly. you get started? Um, I was one of the city officials that trotted down to the site a couple of weeks ago with the <clears throat> building inspectors, both the one that's been on the project for the last three years, and uh, Ashanti Wolf, the chief building inspector. And I met with them this morning just to get their sense on this application and they are 100 percent in support of the commission approving the demolition of what remains uh, I've just made a few notes from speaking with them uh, they feel like the both the frame and the foundation are structurally deficient there's so much rot in what's there it's not really reusable they'd be surprised if five percent of what you still see on the site remains on the site by the time it gets through the code review uh, they strongly believe that a monolithic Poor for the foundation is going to be much better for the durability of the building over the long term for given it's going to be 99% new construction above that foundation 
and they definitely have public safety concerns as what the applicant mentioned about they're not even sure they want people under that frame doing the work with the way it's not just stabilized but the way it's situated yeah so um, I think so the last thing I'd say is I think all of us went into this including the inspection department with the assumption things wouldn't be nearly as bad as they were when they did the demolition you know exploratory work and it just led from one thing to the other we've been watching this for a couple of years from a permitting uh, compliance perspective and um, it is what it is but it, there, there's just it, it seems like there's I'm surprised there aren't letters to the editor that uh, work against us for no for ideas having, here uh, please Nick. having it retained <laughs> uh, to be honest so I'm, I'm sure that the letters will come in however on the other side but, on the other side well, but after um, on my own experience it was 20 25 years ago um, taking apart a motel in Salisbury um, I didn't know the two men that were inside the building but uh, I was doing similar type of jobs and um, th essentially the motel collapsed on them um, when they were they had done similar to what you've done right here and they took one too much and the whole thing came right down they were both killed it's a terrible thing um, the best thing would be to just take this down right now and uh, as long as we have um, we have your guarantees that all of the materials um, the corner boards the window trim all is being replicated the soffits the fascias up top um, I assume you're putting a brick veneer on this cement monolithic foundation we would be Love yeah that, that would be um, uh, part we didn't notate that in our conversation but obviously where we are adding that to the back I mean that's part of the historical value that I figured as a as a as a group here we I would think that Nick is putting that in as a stipulation yeah that, if you don't that, mind once again with an on-site sample uh, to be reviewed by some selected portion of the Commission yes sure. so Absolutely. you understand you're going to have your mason do a, a, a mock -up. bit of mock-up Sure. so that we can see the bricks in the morning yeah. you might want to do that before you order too many bricks <laughs> that's the right that's yeah. good to know we've okay. got a lot of extra brick around there so if there's <laughs> <laughs> true so could i could i just ask a, a question Certainly, Mark. Um, for for future understanding the the extent of the work that happened from the time this was approved until now did, this, did the scope of the work and demolition to the building happen because of the extent of the changes you were preparing for? Or would this have happened anyway? I guess what I'm asking is, did this, did this plan fail because what you were trying to turn the building into was too much for the building to manage? Or no matter what you were going to do with the building, even if you were not going to add dormers and you were not going to turn it into condos, you were just going to fix it up, so to speak, you, do you feel you would have been in the same place? Um, it's a great question. <laughs> I, I, I think um, that if I was not so stubborn as to every, when we first met with you, I think this is a good question because I think it's important for the board to know in this process. But when we first met with you, we had not done any demolition inside that building. We hadn't removed a single piece of plaster to know what was really behind the walls. I mean, we always assumed we knew, but there was some code compliance that had been taking place over that building. But we knew it was in rough shape. Um, my goal was always to save that building. Um, and every contractor that we've had that has come in there doesn't have the same heart for that always. Some do, some don't, but they are like, what are you saving here? And so we've always fought that one. And we, you know, the, together have said it's worth saving. From a code compliance standpoint, from a practicality standpoint, the moment that I open any wall or any space, I now have to bring whatever is there and connected to it to code. Um, so structurally, that's why we ended up here last time. We had to take this part down. We had to put a new foundation. There were details around that. We were willing to continue down that road no matter how painful it felt for us. Um, 
that uh, or how many times it woke me up in the middle of the night when I heard the wind blow. But um, uh, the reason that this failed, this idea failed, I I believe is that um, I think someone else would have probably come in here and said we need to take the structure down. They would have done the selective demolition first, and then they would have come in front of you and said we need to take that structure down. I probably still would have come in and done the selective demolition first, opened up the walls, saw it was there, and still said to you, I'd like to try and save the structure, but ultimately that's really not the right decision for the structure once you get right down to it. So code compliance and stubbornness, I think, is tied to the answer. <laughs> and, and, and sort of on that, on that score, yeah. the applicant was asked by us to come here. The applicant didn't submit this voluntarily. So we approach the applicant. That, that's how unusual this circumstance is. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not trying to be argumentative, yep. but I think that this yeah. is illustrative for future people who buy buildings like this Correct. and have these grand plans of turning it into condos and putting in dormers and doing all this sort of stuff, that you have to understand and really know the old building first before you decide that you can turn it into a modern condominium. Absolutely correct. So this is not a criticism to you, oh. it's more of a, a lesson learned for everybody? Correct. We, um, I, I, think, I think all around in all conversations that we've had, um, <laughs> that has been the, the takeaway for everybody involved in it. We've all tried to save it and we all thought we could. We've all walked through it, we all thought we might be able to do it co-compliance on the list goes. So I, I think we all agree completely, yeah. I know you want to move, but I want Nick, to just, I, can I say one thing? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, thank you. I can't stop you. I guess not. <laughs> um, sorry about that. I think it's equally instructive for us, given Matt was back here with that garage that was on no foundation, mm -hmm. which is why he was here the last time. What we've got to learn from this, irrespective of a proposed use, is that the project that got approved by the Historic District Commission preserved virtually nothing of the building. And I would be willing to wage a bet that most of the commissioners that voted on it did not understand that that frame you're looking at is basically all that we were asking them to save. No sheathing, no windows, no frames, no siding, no corner boards, no doors, nothing. And I'm not sure that was clear to anybody. It certainly wasn't to me. And half of you have called me over the last two years saying, well, what's going on over there? But So it's a lesson learned that we, we yeah. need to be careful what we are looking at and whether we understand it before we approve it. That's all. Well, um, I saw David, but Nick, uh, if I may. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to say that this is the second time I've seen this happen, and it just isn't going to happen again, I hope. Um, the Dennett House off of Prospect Street and Dennett Street, the old center chimney colonial. If that were to have been left as a colonial home, center chimney, it's certainly one of the oldest wooden houses in Portsmouth, that somebody who loved that type of house could have restored it. There were rotted sills, etc. Basically, the whole thing boiled down to making that into four condominiums that its floor plan and framing and the giant chimney and the stairwell that wrapped around the chimney in the front didn't work out into their program. And so we got convinced that the building was beyond repair and we allowed it to be taken down. And that's the first time, this is the second time. That's all I want to say. I don't want to really extend this out a lot longer, but David. Uh, much the same complaint as everyone else, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, just pointing out that this is the second frame we've lost tonight. Ah. Um, so it, if we're sitting here three years out and ostensibly they've been working on this plan, is that where we're going with this? Yeah. Um, because it, the the building that you approved you thought was something that fit on the frame that you were preserving mm -hmm. um, and now we know that the building that you the commission approved is not dependent on the frame at all is this the building that we 
things should be there. Or is that a place too far to go with this I, point? I think, I think you've too gone far. too far. Yeah. You know, that's a bridge. You too always far. think that about yeah, me, I, know. Mr. I think it's, it's, just it's the condition of the frame rather than the the, uh, the frame is that is still the shape of the frame. And I, I know, Dave, that's probably not what you're suggesting. It sounds like a George it. Washington's axe story to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Been John, rehabbed okay. three times Any, and uh, had replaced once. Any other yeah. serious comments? <laughs> oh, I have a serious comment. <clears throat> I, look, you know, we only have so much control over what's going to come before us. I mean, if yes, if you would have come before us and said, yeah, I want to change the roof out, I want to just paint the interior, and, yeah, you probably wouldn't be in this position. But it wouldn't have changed the foundation. It wouldn't have changed the rot in the walls. It wouldn't have changed the framing that's deteriorated. Look, we, we only have control over what becomes comes before. If, if someone wants to take a project and and turn it into condominiums and multiple units, what are we going to tell them they can't do that? That you can't use the building, of the, you know, we're not going to allow that use. No, we're not. That's not our role. So, yeah, it's a sad situation. And I'm, I was wondering when you were going to come before us again. So let's deal in reality. I mean, the building's going to, the building's in bad shape. The building has a cancer and we could have just left it alone, but you think it's going to go away? No, it's still going to get worse and worse. And someone's going to be living in a situation where they could have a structural failure. And, and uh, yeah. so I'm just saying, you know, we have to work within the reality that we're presented with. Mm -hmm. I'll just say, Make it brief. I, I, want to brief. Close this. I know. I'm just going to say, I'm sorry that <laughs> this building ended up being in such bad shape and that you are stuck <clears> with this <throat> problem. Um, but I appreciate you coming back and trying as hard as you have. And again, this is the, the plan that we approved, and it's still going to look and be the same. And so um, that, that is what it is. I appreciate that. Thank you. So um, I guess I'm going to close this public hearing and look. Was there any public comment? No, I, I'm looking for comment from the public. Okay. I'm sorry. Is there anybody in the public that wants to speak on this? I was going to make a comment too, but it's okay. My number Evening, sorry. members of the commission. Um, my name is Matt Beebe, and I've appeared before you many times as both a designer and a builder. So. I just want to uh, echo a little bit the comments that a couple of commissioners made, which is um, it's unfortunate that we are where we are with this building. It's not necessarily the fault of the builder or the designer. I think it's more of a process problem. So the commission has a certain uh, amount of power to uh, oversee the changes to these historic buildings. The building department has a separate set of criteria. The Board of Adjustment, in cases where these older buildings are right up against another building, has its own set. And yet, the, all these boards, commissions, and inspection departments don't necessarily connect in a meaningful way mm -hmm. that can help the designer and the builder. So if, for example, I'll just hypothesize here, if you're taking a, an historic building, which clearly is going to have some problems, the extent of which we can't know until the builder gets into it. Or we do a pre-construction survey, probably at great expense or some expense, to determine you know, what are the real problems here. But if you're going to do a significant change of use, that would seem to me that's an opportunity for the city to have some sort of regulation that says, if this is going to be more than a two-family, or if this is going to go from the Dennett house, a single family, to multiple condominiums, then there should be a set of criteria that you'd have to go through to satisfy making that change, which is probably going to trigger a greater deal of inspection and survey ahead of time with a structural engineer maybe digging around the foundation, um, maybe taking off a section of the wall to see what sills look like in more than one location. And I get these are all expenses that will typically be borne by the developer or the homeowner, right? The builder wants to do the work, but he doesn't want to pay for it to discover whether or not he can get the job. So I realize it's tricky. I realize that when you take 
And what Mr. Silva said about the building department is entirely true. The moment we open up anything, we own anything behind it, whether we had anything to do with it or not. And that goes for lead paint, hazardous materials like asbestos. You, sometimes you have no idea what's in there. So I can, don't have the answer for it, but I think there should be a way for the city to look at this as a, you know, with a greater view, like a broader view. It's not just saving the historic building, it's saving the historic building, making it safe, comply, and get to a point where this doesn't happen, where either people who abut the property or drive by it and say what you had said, Nick, for it's been three years, what's happening? You know, there's been different points of time where you look and you think that site is really unsafe. People walk by it, people walk their dogs by it, kids, you know, always want to be around the fire station and that's close proximity. So, um, as I said, I don't have the answers. I just think maybe there's a way for uh, this to come up in discussion. I don't know if it should be brought to the city council. I'd be curious to hear what the commission would say about how to get to a point uh, where we could have greater oversight at the beginning rather than get to the point where this has obviously cost the builder and the owner of the property a lot of money and they're at the, at the moment, until you vote, they're no closer to getting it moving forward. And as an abutter to the State Street Saloon and that project that has been ongoing now five years five next years. month, nothing's happened there since that fire. And now it's up for sale. So we're probably looking at at least another 24 months before anything gets done. There's got to be a clearer, cleaner path to satisfying what you guys are looking for helping the builders get to a point where they can complete the project and satisfying all these criteria along the way. Thank you. And thank you very much. Uh, may I make a comment too? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, the problem as I see it is that uh, the dreams that some of us have require a foundation. And uh, the problem is that we are not very, uh, um, I will use, the 60s term hip on what it means to, uh, you know, get to what the foundation really is like. Um, we simply frequently follow our dreams believing or assuming that everything will simply work out. So there, there are just learning lessons on all sides here uh, in terms of how the different agencies and commissions can work together to make sure that these things don't happen or don't happen too often is really not our task. I think the task really belongs to the petitioner to do his or her homework. So, Heinz, let me just, I know, John, you want to move on, but it, it's, I think it's good for members that are maybe newer, maybe not, to understand the differences between these couple of projects we've mentioned. I think the first line of defense is the, is the city through the HDC and on 95 Prospect, which John mentioned earlier, we hired, we made the applicant hire a structural engineer, John Watney, the same guy we had go through the Tynes building to save it because we had four structural engineers say for Mr. Floros, it, it has no value, tear it down. So uh, the city took the initiative to save the Tynes building by having, we shared the cost uh, of that structural assessment through this board and we did the same on 95 Prospect. It ha so happened the conclusion at 95 Prospect was different from Watney uh, than the Times building, uh, but that's what it was. The, the second line of defense, which has to be the way on, on what Heinz is saying, is the marketplace. I mean, time is money. People own property. If they want to throw money away every month on taxes or whatever, just carrying costs, or paying people to do things that are inefficient, like stick this thing on cribbing for two years, that's their prerogative. Somebody's paying for all this inefficiency. And one would expect in that instance, if it's a hardship, they're going to run in and ask for, hey, we did all this exploratory stuff after the permit, and it's a disaster. So we need, we need an, an off-ramp. Well, that didn't happen here, probably because he's a dreamer. I have no idea. But the city was the third line of defense here and showed up on our own initiative and said, hey, what the heck is wrong with you? Get in here and ask. We're sick of looking at it. Mm. And it doesn't make any sense that you're still playing around with these matchsticks. 
So um, the system can definitely be better, and, and but no buts, it can be better. But we are trying to be proactive, and in this case, uh, maybe we could have all done some more due diligence earlier, but the, the city has certainly tried on the back end to bring them in here and have this conversation and hopefully get this project finished. I don't know what you're saying when you say we. Well, the city. <laughs> it, well, the, <laughs> Because the one thing I will say about going through on the site walk, when we first went into this building, the whole first floor was all tongue and groove boards. The ceiling was tongue and groove boards. This thing, I thought, I mean, they could park fire engines in there. I thought that this thing was built like the proverbial brick, you know what. Um, I didn't feel any <laughs> bouncing upstairs on the second floor. Um, it, it, to me, this building really felt r rugged. And um, so they had to, for some reason, decided to take the entire roof off to put these dormers in. Didn't have to do that. And once they started peeling all of the tongue and groove boards, which is actually its auxiliary, um, yeah, yeah it, it actually has some um, structural value. Structural yeah. value. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And that's what petitions do. They're auxiliary structural value. And um, so once they stripped it down to the frame, the toothpicks, all of a sudden it became weaker and then they could notice that the bottoms and, you know, the, the sills or whatever. But the way that it was, it probably could have gone on another hundred years. That's just the way these houses work, you know? They have two by fours for rafters, but somehow the roof doesn't collapse. Weird. Um, but I think that we should just, you know, let's try to move on. I don't know. Oh, then you better come you have up. have another public speak. Okay. And then we have another comment. I'll see if there's mm -hmm. anybody here. Now. Hi, I'm Barbara Jenny. I'm a co-property owner to 94, 92 and 94 Pleasant Street. And I know you are worried about, um, you know, letters, follow-up letters, so I'll just give you mine now. <laughs> I'm outraged. I'm outraged about this. And for all the things you mentioned, um, and to say, oh, well, we're, here we are, so it's got to come down, it should never have gotten to this point. Uh, and all the things Matt said and all the things you've said, I hope somebody's taken notes and put that all together so that all the agencies are communicating and that those agencies are supporting builders who are not up to the task. So not a year or two before this project went awry, um, the same outfit over demoed a property that's right across from my residence. Um, and that project was put on hold it was literally twisting in the wind so that children riding their bikes by could have, uh, that building could have fallen on them. The same outfit. And they went in and did it again. And so now here we are saying, oh well, it's got to come down. So I hope that this agent, this commission, the planning board, the zoning board, can we have some teeth when people go past what they're permitted to do? And I hear that you, unfortunately, did permit all of this demo. Um, and so you did lose the integrity of the building because they did remove the stuff that wasn't a good idea to remove. Um, but I hope we can give some guidance to builders. I hope we can have some, require some engineering um, be done and have inspectors in there um, and everybody talking together and looking at records from the builder's history and what they've done before and to avoid, avoid these things moving, moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. We have one, one speaker, Matt Healy. Um, Matt, are you there? His hand is up. Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Matt. Name and address. Yes, I am one of the buyers, and um, Carl Ward is the other buyer. We have been watching this meeting um, and texting back and forth. I wanted to say that um, whether or not we're in agreement on how much to salvage is not yet we're not yet there uh it's a point of negotiation that we're having with uh matt silva and the financer of this project uh we are amenable to it but we have some other concerns and so we haven't quite worked through what we're in agreement to just yet i just wanted to make sure our position was accurately represented because it felt to me like it was represented that we were a hundred percent behind demo uh demolishing it 
We're amenable to it, Jeez, but we, it is one of several bullet points of negotiations that are currently ongoing. Thank you very much for making the application about demoing the building, and uh, we've just wasted 45 minutes talking about this. Um, I'm suggesting that what should we do? Maybe we should postpone this. What are we going to do here? Uh, he's saying he's not for – this is an owner. All right. Can, can you offer some clarity? Uh, if I may, well, I can, I can try. So uh, as, as we discussed in Clearer Heads discussing this, uh, we are all still working through this. We don't know what our possibilities are. So I have a few things to address. Um, I'll start with um, I appreciate everything that's been said in the public comment about the steps of the process and how we achieve those steps in making sure that things like this don't happen. Um, in that process, we did have engineers in this site. We did have site reviews. We did have discussions. We did meet with building officials. We've been through this building. So, and the uh, understanding was the city wanted it saved until we've come to this point where the city is now saying, and we are also saying we're working very hard to try and save this building. And um, John, to your point, no, we haven't wasted any time. If the approval is that we are allowed to take that down, well, then the discussion with the owners can continue on how that is done or what that is, um, what that means. It doesn't mean we have to take the building down. If we can um, and we need to, and all parties that are invested True, in the project go. agree, okay. then we will. All right, very good. But as we, as I stated before on record, there's an agreement about the salvaging of how this goes. So to, to Mr. Healy's point, which he is correct, we, we have not all said, hey, we're all on board and we're taking it yeah. down. We're, we're examining what those options are. And to Nick's point as well, we're here uh, in part on invitation. So if we can still do something else that's yeah. here, then we shall. We can so. vote on this. Okay, that's what thank we you can do. very much. All right, well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Mr. Healy. I'm sorry that I overreacted, apparently. Um, so I'm going to close this public hearing and have a vote with the stipulations that uh, Nick has. Um, who would like to make the motion? Yeah. You gonna do it? I'll do it if you don't. Go ahead. <laughs> because I don't, I don't think we have a choice. No. no. We don't. Um, I, I move that we uh, allow for the full demolition of the framing and the foundation uh, for this building. With stipulation. With stipulation that it be agree. rebuilt original to the app, the the approvals that the. Uh, the architecture, the How about envelope, the details all be replicated uh, or match what was approved previously. Can I uh, can I just read it? Uh, sure. The approved plans shall the approved plans and any prior stipulations shall govern the building design, which I think covers what you just said more or less. Are you good with that? Because uh, I've written think, it down. I think that's I number said one. It better. What? All right. <laughs> I'll look at the very minutes. planning board. Uh, yeah. This so. The second one is that a brick shelf shall be used with a mock-up required for the foundation. And number three, this is me writing this down, the applicant shall submit a formal agreement from, from all owners prior to demolition. <laughs> Just so we have a clear record of where, where, yeah. where would he go? Both. Oh, Both where are you landed? Yeah. Because um, if you okay. don't get that <clears throat> letter of formal agreement filed, you're stuck with the, the prior. I'm looking Condition. for a second. I'll second it. You got it? You're seconding? I'm seconding. Okay, very good. Um, so, uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Did we get findings of fact? Uh, um, no. Findings of, this is going to be difficult. I know, that's why I didn't want to do it. It is. <laughs> 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 hmm. Bear with me for a moment. Certainly. Well, number three, conservation and enhancement of property values. Certainly not helping any now. So you're you're saying that that would be the appropriate purpose and intent? I think so. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, number three, conservation and enhancement of property values. Uh, and uh, hmm. 
How about the relation and historical and That's architectural value there. of the existing structure? Relation to the historic and architectural value of the existing structure. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, well, yeah, it's good I, just, I just feel that uh, we're at a point where we're, we're trying to keep a corpse alive and yeah. Yeah. done. All right. <laughs> okay, so all of those in favor, say aye. 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 And those against? So you have your possible approval to possibly tear it down if you think you'd like to do that. Thank you. Um, should we take a break? Yeah, I think, it, uh, I think we should. We should all just, you know, take a good deep breath. Might help the next applicant. Yeah, we may. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to take a five minute break.
We're going to get back into our other one this time. Second half here. Work sessions. One point. Six. Excuse me. I don't have it. So this is a, a work session requested by Working Stiff Properties LLC owner for property located at 92 Pleasant <coughs> Street, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing um, wait, structure. Wait, excuse me. We haven't done that one yet. Replace windows and storm windows. No, no, we haven't we done, haven't 120, done that one. 129 State. 129 State Street. I'm yeah. very sorry. <laughs> Aren't we on 129 State Street? Yeah. Yes, we are. All right. I was just too enthusiastic. Okay, so the party atmosphere is now stopped, and we're back to work session requested by 129 State Street LLC owner for property located at 129 State Street, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations and new construction to an existing structure. Removal of shutters, addition of dormers, roof and siding changes as per plans on file in the in the planning department said property is shown on assessor map 107 as lot 47 and lies within the character district 4 and historic districts okay are we going down for work session yeah who's here oh, <clears throat> oh going work down. session yeah State Street, and who is here to present and talk to us? Uh, Shane Forsley with uh, Hampshire Development Corp, uh, general contractor, um, on behalf of the owners of 129 State Street. Um, I do have hard copies if anybody would prefer that, as opposed to looking at their uh, tablets or laptops. Um. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you. No, I'm going to go. Uh, May I have one also? Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, like, paper. Yeah. It's a nice. Yes. It's a nice right, looking. Please. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. One, two. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, this is how they used to treat us. <laughs> it's bound so, and everything. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're back here um, for 129 State Street. Um, we took many of the comments and feedback from last month's work session um, and incorporated it into the package you see here today. Um, based on our conversation last month, um, a lot of what we gathered was uh, the modifications to the uh, modern edition um, were generally well received with a little bit of feedback. Um, I know we, we had some um, resistance for the dormers facing State Street, um, which have been removed as you can see, and uh, the architect and owner um, instead now propose two skylights um, on the uh, roof facing State Street. What you'll also notice is the incorporation of an oculus um, at the ridge of, uh, of the main structure. Um, <clears throat> another few subtle notes. Um, you continue to see the stone sills and headers um, as proposed in last month's package. Um, what we are researching is the material of the stone banding on State Street. Um, the owner would like to match that and or um, utilize granite or another stone sill um, for the headers um, and sills around the windows. Um, 
Another item we want to touch on are the window of pleaks and shutters. Um, Nick was kind enough to dig up uh, the application from about 10 years ago that uh, John referenced um, showing the signs of some sort of mill work and shutters um, on the original structure. Um, what we'd like to do is uh, get at least a portion of the commission over there for a site walk at some point in the near future. Um, we intend to remove uh, the molding and shutters on one of the near near windows on ground floor uh, and take a good look at things and determine what would be an appropriate uh, applique for those. <clears throat> Let's see here. Some other modifications you'll notice towards the end of your package on sheet. Sheet A 2.2. Um, we have shown a pediment option um, on the main entry door off the side of the building. Uh, yes, it's actually 2A2.2, so it would be the second, second sheet in there. Um, what you'll also notice in the west proposed elevation, you'll notice the oculus skylight as well as a glass ridge skylight on the uh, the ridge of the addition in the rear. Oh, on the ridge of the building. Yes. Yeah. And so the intent for that is uh, to bring light into the attic, which is now attic space, um, which will serve as a office and workspace for the owner of the property up there. I just ask a quick question. I didn't see a detail for the Oculus. What what actually are the side walls? And, and is that a glazed dome? What? So it would be a glazed dome. Um, the side walls would likely be uh, <coughs> copper or metal. Um, okay. Certainly open to suggestions. Lead coated um, copper. Mm -hmm. Seven feet wide. Cor yeah. Correct. Size for an Oculus? I don't know much. I, mean, I, don't know Oculus. <laughs> I haven't got my Oculus mentioned here. Um, I don't know. Pretty big. I think that Daniel Street's close to that, six, seven feet. The 129 Daniel. It, it's six, six, six feet is the size of the couple that I've seen. I, I, I was just thinking about it. I was thinking the one in. Like, um, the, I've, I've, the couple that I've seen framed out, I've only seen fragments of them, I've not seen the whole one put together. But they were about six foot. Mm -hmm. Did you say this is seven or six? Seven. Seven feet. Yeah. Yeah. On sheet A 1.3, you can get an idea of uh, the size of it and scale of the roof. Um, and also, there's an outline showing where it is in proximity to the loft office space as well as that uh, stair tower. And, um, can we concentrate right now on uh, the additions and, and the changes you're making on the back uh, um, for that uh, Chief Street? And then some of us can make comments <laughs> on the, uh, the windows and door treatment. Sure. So on Chief Street, um, what you'll see is... GD1. 3D1. I'm on 3D1. I'm looking at the uh, axiometric views. But we can jump to the elevation so we can look at existing and propose. It's up front. You have it. You do? Yeah, move up through the. Oh, okay. It's at the beginning of the. Oh, it's at the beginning. Yeah, so what you'll see is the, the footprint of the structure that's there today. Um, is the same as it is proposed. Essentially what's happening is the garage entry and the uh, civilian entry have flip-flopped. Um, right now the garage is located on the right hand side as you look at it from view two. Um, and they propose to flip that as that's a nice area with light coming in through the uh, Are these all the proposed space. or are they existing and proposed? These are all proposed, all proposed. on this page. <coughs> Um, on the 
blank wall that you see on Shafe Street View 1. Um, right now there are two false windows um, with shutters applied. You on the same sheet? 3D1? Yes. Same page. Yeah. Same page. Page. Upper left. Lower right. Lower, Lower right. right. Yeah, same. Yeah, existing has two applied uh, shutters, false, false windows. Those go away. Um, you'll notice in the bottom left, Sheaf Street View 2, up above the garage doors, uh, small dormer um, with a small roof addition above to serve uh, the second floor space. So the big shed's new, the small shed's new, and the elevated portion of the addition's new. Okay. Correct. Coming down from the roof. Correct. Correct. And I think if you jump ahead to A1.3, the roof plan, you get an idea of um, the stepping. Yeah, the stepping of the roofs and, and how that's all integrated. Um, essentially what's new would be that oculus moving page south, the shed dormer, um, that next hip roof with the ridge skylight would be new and the small, small gable dormer there and then the rest of that structure is as it is, exists today with the addition of the standing seam roof above the pedestrian entry on the right hand side. It seems very complicated, the roof plan, but I'm not saying that it's uh, No. So, <laughs> I wouldn't want to roof it. I wouldn't want to maintain it either. Mm -hmm. right. If you jump ahead one more sheet to A2.1, you'll see a small um, scale existing in the top left hand portion of the page and proposed is down below. So there's some movement of windows, um, some get mulled together, um, but new fenestrations and then again the garage door and the pedestrian entry flip-flop. Um, let me just ask the, the, the board, um, are we still Insisting on a space in between our yeah. windows. Yeah, I was going to say, normally <sighs> this, the three windows sort of mold together so closely would mm -hmm. really bother me. You have a stud pocket in yeah. between sure. the windows. Give it a little space. Because when they're mold together, they're, they're, mold. they're yeah. very tight. Yeah. You like to see a three and a half inch two by four between. mold in between. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially like as an addition to such yeah. a yeah. very... Yes. Not, not the doors. Traditional. Yeah, mm -hmm. Traditional or no, they're all symmetrical doors. Yeah. building. Yeah, you show that separation on uh, A21. The um, door three, three, number three drawing. Yeah, from the north. Yeah, yeah. Elevation number three, where yeah. you see it in the... Uh, the dormer. In the dormer. That looks good. Up. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the look you want. Yeah, it's in the dormer, but not on the second floor. <clears throat> okay. Keep going. Yeah, keep on going. Yeah. Oh, you're done? Yeah. Well, who's who's keep going? If there is, okay. if you have another comment on that elevation, keep going, Shane. Okay, we'll uh, jump over to the south proposed. Um, Looking up top, top right being existing, uh, we can come back to the window treatments. I think it's clear. What number is oh, it? Same page. Same so. page. Okay. Uh, you'll see the Oculus on the main ridge of the Bottom right. masonry building um, with two low profile skylights. Those essentially are just an inch or two above, above the uh, new roof um, as far as profile there. And the roof is it? Is it still flow, faux slate? Yes, synthetic okay. slate. Well, not, not the wedge we just had, right? No. Okay. I didn't <laughs> catch which brand that was. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But I'm not <laughs> going to, I will not go looking for it. It was something it. called Bravo. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sure that, uh, I'm just losing my, but, but I see on the south proposed, mm -hmm. this is silly, but I see vertical lines. Mm -hmm. yeah. What am I looking at? On the right. On, on the. I see that 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 line about 
two feet from the yeah. sure from the party wall. There's the also neighbor. one under the other win the, the file the right hand side of the file of windows. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what those lines are. Why am I looking at them? <laughs> there is a good question. I think he's trying to shadow in the back of the building where it steps in. I don't know. It's something dragged from the mm -hmm. front to the back. It looks okay. like the same. So dimension. we're not to worry. It's not that, on this. No, that's that's yeah. not you. an intended just, expansion okay. joint or any sort of break point right. in the facade. I just what I'm looking at. That's mm -hmm. well, it could be. Um, you know, uh, a radon ventilation yeah. tube going up the building. I think what it is, like Nick, going better. Nick yeah. touched on is that's the alignment of the uh, the addition onto the rear of the structure. If you look up there, ah, it's the alignment of the <coughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. shadow on Got the left. Is yeah. Got it. Got it. Thank you. <clears throat> and so, on the uh, clabbered building, what you'll see is removal of those two small windows that flank the uh, patio doors. Um, expanding that patio door to a, a triple um, and then on the lower region um, enclosing what is now uh, the patio and incorporating it into what will be the the kitchen area can i ask how those three doors work on the second floor are they accordion or yeah how um, Wing. One is fixed. Yeah, slide. Two are fixed, and the middle is a oh, the operable middle. door. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You see the slightly uh, the light dashed line mm -hmm. in the yeah, center. I see. Yeah, the angular the diagonal. Uh, yeah, that's. See it here. Yeah. I don't see it. It's very busy with oh, a nice. lot of panes of glass mm -hmm. in that facade. other people feel about that but I, I feel like it's um, yeah like I think the intention well, there is looking out mm -hmm. into that garden um, a lot of natural light comes in from from that that side and it's also the desirable view while you sit in the kitchen sure. looking out into that space oh you mean on the ground you don't like it on the ground the, well, both. the whole I'm, facade yeah. I think as she said but you must admit you know it does follow your guideline of looking very Anyone else uh, puzzled as to why we're removing uh, mid-century uh, trim off the old building to make it look more federal and removing the arched door openings, arched well, garage door openings to make to get, it look you know, less to, federal? To get to that next, because there's a lot of discussion, I feel, on that. But I, okay. um, it's possible that this is the time. Well, it's the same as the page we're looking at. Well, yeah, mentioned. this is the time. Um, we've all, some of us have been doing some research, and Reagan has some Oh, I, in, well, I can just pass it. My, my office back in 2009 did the survey of up and down State Street um, in, I forget why. For the was, State Street project, probably. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> State Street improvements. And so I just printed out from that. This was even before my time. I wasn't there. But um, if anybody wanted to look at just a just a brief, no. I gave a copy to Shane. Just just a brief history, description, and of history the building. of the building that we came up with. It's nothing that is really going to affect any of this project. It just gives you some more background mm -hmm. um, and helps to determine that at least we you know that it was built around 1835. Um, and seems to have been built as an expansion of a shop that was there previously. Um, and so it was not necessarily built as a residential structure originally, originally mm -hmm. but then was used as one, obviously it was turned into a boarding house, um, has so been done a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's um, very interesting, yeah. that boarding house. Yeah. And we, figured out it was the gurney photo from yes. 1902 that shows these crazy window headers and mm -hmm. shutters and all that stuff so, so, it was, so it, it, is it at some point in the eight, in the 19th century those were added it likely was not original again because it wasn't a residence and it was just kind of a simple shop um, yeah that's awesome for your client yeah it, and it's a great uh, resource so I guess it's really uh, up to us to really decide is um, do we want to maintain something that could possibly have been added in 1850 or 60 or 70, the, uh, you know, the window trim heads. And um, there was 
a lot of that going on because I noticed that the Pierce block, um, which is to the left-hand side of the Athenaeum, uh, at one time that was all added. No. These are the pictures that went here. That was from 2009. Yeah, unfortunately so. they're from 2009, but they do show that um, those window heads. And the picture from 1902 does show those window heads. Which? The, the, the ones, ones that, that exist. No, the no sort of it's the one I sent you. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. which I did give to him. Yes, yes. and, and I have on my that. phone. And, um, and also that um, gabled Greek Revival door, which to me seems very appropriate for, uh, for this structure. I don't know why that would be, you know, such a demand to tear that thing take off. I want to take a quick peek at that. <laughs> What's going on? Um, so you have a building that has an expression, <laughs> of, uh, almost a folly to it. And believe it or not, that is an architectural term. And uh, you want to just go back to a stern federal puritanical look. <laughs> but um, So these are the questions we should be talking about right now. Other people should be talking about. Hmm? <laughs> well, I, face. I, was, um, <laughs> I was hoping for more evidence, stronger evidence of the window headers. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure how I come down on those. Um, but the one thing I know for certain is that I did not approve the evidence. 1902. Yeah. <laughs> I would keep them if, if, you know, it just makes me <laughs> think that <laughs> I would keep them. But um, Anybody else? They I could not. Oh, you didn't see it? Sorry. The skylights, I could not see, given that there weren't any skylights and there's, they're newly cut in. I, I can't <clears> see us <throat> approving that. I, I can't approve that. Um, and in terms of the Oculus, if you're going to do an Oculus, at least do some one, one that's it's got some historic uh, qualities to it. Right now, it looks very flat. It looks uh, it looks like a drum with, and you can't see what's above the drum. Uh, it should have a, at least a dome on it. It should be more classical in in nature. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's further up on the peak and everything, but uh, yeah, it just doesn't look right mm -hmm. right now. How, how do you spell Oculus? O C U L U S. L U S. Mm -hmm. We wanted to show it and get some feedback on it, so I think that's that's good information for us to take home, do some more, do yeah. some more homework, and uh, figure out how it should really take its form. Because I think it's a it's a really cool feature, and and uh, it's neat that there's a couple in the city right now. It would be it would be awesome. <laughs> It should be scaled to, to be appropriate for the rest of the room. <laughs> I actually think um, the design of it is currently is interesting, and it makes it clear that it's not a historical piece. Although, what, was there discussion last time of, of having evidence that there was an Oculus up there? No. Okay. We, not in that building. Dave seems to remember one when he put the when he did the staircase. Yeah. Um, there were pieces that was not outside of my area of operation, but there were there were holes and, and I could see some space up above and I peered a little bit and saw pieces that I was certain were part of a, like I say, about a six foot diameter oculus. They were boarded on the inside and the boarding, because of the attic nature of it, uh, was uh, whitewashed. Um, they weren't curved boards. There was nothing truly elaborate about it. It was a way to get light into a hallway. It, was, it had all of the architectural charm of, an, of a lampshade, a big lampshade that was set with the pieces in a circle. They were slightly tapered, mm. um, but there was no hole in the roof. There was not a great deal of light, and I was getting paid to do a staircase. I don't know if any of you ever tried working for Jay Smith. <laughs> so you but. didn't notice that the framing was headed off the uh, any any purlins or anything? I, I have no comments to make about the framing at all. Sorry. I, I should have paid more attention. Well, we all should have back yeah. in those days. Yeah. Let's go in Daniel. Well, Let's I, get in Daniel Street and take yeah, some photos. I mean, I, right there. I think, I think yeah. that it would be worth looking at some examples around both here and maybe elsewhere. But um, I don't know. I mean, I actually think the simple nature of it makes it lower profile so that you wouldn't.
necessarily notice it as much mm -hmm. walking down the street. And it, and it's clear that it is a modern. Um, in the 19th century, there was very few, very very little curved glass, yeah. and I don't recall any metal mullions. So it had to be wood, and it had to be flat pieces of glass. And the truth is, when I looked at the drawing, never having been tasked to make one, but I looked at that and said, that's what they probably look like. They're pretty nearly flat. And the glass is pitched enough to get the water to run off it. With this, and you said this glass would be very slightly domed, so it wouldn't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it would just shed water. Yeah. My my concern is that it doesn't end up like looking like a piece of mechanical equipment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. True. Good point. Yeah. Save that for the restaurants. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It, it, this is definitely innovative and new. So you're you're not wrong. It needs to work. Yeah. So I, I was going to suggest when you're done that you ask him for a detail on that, mm -hmm. just that feature, so it can yeah. be clearly read. Yeah. yeah. We can do that. So uh, I think your idea of uh, removing uh, one of these decorative headers and uh, and um, at least getting a chance to look at the Greek revival. Wood over the the door um, would give us a chance to you know, judge the age of everything. And, <laughs> and if they were in there in 1902, I mean, I know that these ones that are on there now are all new. Yes, yeah, they're all new. Going back to an approval that we gave in um, 2009, was that? Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Yeah. Okay. That was a bad year. Really? That's the year I got hired for. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there would have been a lentil. Yeah. But you you could see in the images from 2011 that there was something big on there before. Bigger than just a lentil. But it seems hard to believe from this. That these ever would have been on there for a saddlery shop. Right. And so it's really a threat. Like John said, do you want them or not? You can well, go either way. And I, yeah, and I think, you know, made a good point. Like, historic windows. I mean, you've got an old building that had, obviously would have been a retired six over six windows, but it has its 1875 two over two. Either option is valid for that, for, generally, for and speaking, for that building because it's part of that history. So I think you could kind of make the... the Argument to go either way with these. Yeah, I think we I think we do a site walk. We'll evaluate one of them and and uh, talk with the owner about feasibility of, of uh, keeping them if we deem them appropriate or or what, not. What is the problem with them? I just don't like them. I just think I just think there's a, a lot going on on the facade right now, and it's almost overdressed. Okay. He said it was. It tarted up the building. There you go. Oh, that's right. That's, right. Oh, that that's an architectural term. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Um, was there also some that's discussion true. about continuing the horizontal line, or did I hear that wrong? You you were examining the horizontal material that's between the first and second story and the second and third story. Yes. So we referenced <coughs> in the um, details for the header and sills. It calls out stone. Um, and one topic of discussion was match that material that you see on State Street that separates the floors on that facade and utilize that stone for headers and sills. I think Dave may have thrown out there that it was brownstone. Um, we've got somebody looking into exactly what it is. Wow. Yeah, there, there are plenty of brownstone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would have thought it might have been marble. I thought it would be marble. But too. it's not structural. You think it's brownstone? Hard, hey, no, um, building about? next door has some brownstone elements carved okay. into it. Um, I, I'm not certain. It, it, it turns out over time, I don't think know that anybody ever cut one of these into an existing building. It's not impossible, but I'd never heard of that. Um, but over time, different materials, different kinds of stone were available yeah. and easily handled and blah, blah, blah. And the idea of painting a brownstone white like there, there's on the building next door, uh, it's pretty yeah. common yeah. stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. 
Um, I've always thought that these were uh, marble. I did too. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know that. It seems a little early for brownstone, if, but maybe if not. Sure. Marble, you wouldn't use that on the window windows, would you? So you. I wouldn't use you'd, brown. You know, I, I I don't think I'd. Why well, wouldn't you use a precast brownstone? Yeah. What we could find, what we could Good source one. would be a, a precast that would be a, a match Identical. to what we have. Would it be yeah. structural if you cut it? If you're cutting it in over the windows, is that? I mean, they're not. They're, they how are, deeply you cut it. Yeah, this, yeah, I know it is. That sounds awful scary yeah, yeah. to me, but you know, that's me. <laughs> it certainly can be done. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. The brick will hold themselves in place for a little while. <laughs> Gotta do it quick. Hurry up, get yeah. to the next one. Couple days. You gotta keep moving. Get them yeah. moving. Well, they actually did that, what used to be the restaurant, Fat Belly. Exactly, yeah. They did, they did every window. Granite. Mm -hmm. Granite. They were all wood. Yeah. All right, what do we got? Uh, yeah, what do we have? We all have to think so about, about the window dress. dress. Martin doesn't like them. What would everyone else say? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. I I would, I mean, love, uh, I'm excited about the Oculus just because it's a feature that we have almost, it's almost extinct in town. Um, the skylights at the ridge line in the back, I don't think what were there being on in a modern piece of construction. I don't, I don't think that they're really offensive in their location. Uh, the ones on the front facade, I think, are, I'd like to think are unnecessary. That's what I'd like to they're think. Very low. So they would be low on the floor plan also. You know, they wouldn't be far off the floor. Is well, the back and the they look out. skylights? What is that thing? So the two skylights on State Street would uh, provide light to the bedroom on the third floor. Third floor. So it would be a vaulted ceiling in yeah. that area yeah. um, as opposed to lighting the loft in the attic. Oh, I see. What yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah. Than having, you know, foot off the floor. Right. <laughs> uh, may I just... Certainly. I think we had talked about the elevation differences as far as uh, the west facade, as far as the head of it. I really do prefer the uh, proposed version. I think the uh, existing trim uh, seems inappropriate <coughs> for the shape of that gable. Um, it seems overwrought to me. I like the simplicity of Almost uh, like something what is from being Switzerland. proposed. Yeah, it's just it's out of place to me almost. What sheet are you on, Heinz? A two point <coughs> two. Two. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the <coughs> skylights on State Street <coughs> might be a little much, uh, just because that is the most prominent side of the house, obviously being on the main street. And then having those skylights right there, um, I mean, you'd see them before you see the Oculus. But I don't think that would be very his genuinely the, historic. These are flat, really flat skylights. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're, they're I'm, not, I'm not even they're, sure that they're visible. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's that picture. The picture, the picture of the roof. If so you take a walk down State it. Street from the other side of, or the sidewalk across the street, you look down, you'll see one or two other other homes, mm -hmm. very similar to this. They're very low profile. What's the lowest them? you can buy? If money's no object. <laughs> I imagine it's an a inch, dish? an inch above uh, finished roofing. Well, I bet you won't find one in Portsmouth an inch. No, because everybody uses yeah, the vehicles. The they, they, yeah. they don't even. They're like three and a half. There's nothing else. Although the neighbors are pretty, are pretty low profile. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you should, not for Martin's sake, but the rest of them, bring in a sample. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't bring it in. <laughs> I have my objection to skylights, although the, oh, higher, you too. the higher they sit, the more obnoxious they are. Exactly. And it's it's the fact that it just be flush. disrupts the plane of a yeah. nice virgin virgin roof or mm -hmm. clean roof that is traditional architecture of those buildings and yeah. it's just it's like putting a roof deck on one you know, I, have to I, mean, I get that but they're going to do a slate roof where you don't have one now which is a huge enhancement right. not to speak for him but anyway I'm, I'm making a generalized Me statement too. about how I feel yeah. about satellites yeah I mean, I guess if they're low profile, you wouldn't be able to see them from that side of the street. The other side of the street, yeah, more, more, but, but maybe not so. You know what I mean? Like it might not be that 
prominent that I'm thinking in my head. Yeah, we'll um, get you a sample and show you yeah, show you fine. some some photos in context. Yeah, and, and maybe this architect can render something mm -hmm. from the other side of the street, looking down the block. I'm going to make a generalization that um, skylights to me um, don't mean anything. Meaning you're not a, you're not worried about it. I'm not worried about them, mm -hmm. and with a very slight pitch like that. Um, if you took that line of that roof and brought it down, it would come down into the middle of the building across the street. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's You'd have to stand on a step ladder. Yeah. Well, actually, the people in the second floor of the buildings across the street right. could see. <laughs> I know, but what I'm saying we'll is, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Where's the uh, where's that photo? Of, and that will give them the idea. All right, I got the solution as well. Screen. There put a snow guard below it. You'll never see it. Yeah, put snow guards. You're going to have to anyway. Widows walk. Just don't put any uh, solar panels. Solar panels on top yeah. of the skylight. All right, this is fun, huh? Okay, we're devolving rapidly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it seems to me we've discussed everything. Um, I think we've covered all. Yeah, all we've my covered notes. everything. So um, site walk. Yeah, so yeah, I need walks. to have that Let's site walk. Let's establish a date uh, for a site walk, and well, if you want to date or two. You're going to have to get together with Nick, and he'll get together right. with but, uh, We need to have at least half of us at this site walk. I okay. think that's, you know, we've, we've done a one or two person site walk. Uh, we should all get that HDC logo. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah, I noticed he's wearing a... If you guys push it hard. Saw the banner downtown, too, on the... And if you yeah, <laughs> We want to carry yeah. <laughs> because we've been talking about our own helicopter for a long time. <laughs> well, we can do that Oculus survey with it. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. We're devolving again. Some people use drones. We need helicopters. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess you'll be back next month. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll be back next month. I will have some colorized renderings for you and Thank you. and some samples, all that well, good stuff. I think we're getting at getting to a point where so we don't start. I kind of have. I do quick notes. Yeah. All right. Talk to me tomorrow. Very good. Thank you, Machine. Need yeah. a motion? Yeah. yeah, continue it. Yeah, I guess we need a motion. For motion to continue. Second. To, to, uh, in favor. to April. To April. To April. Uh, yeah. 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 Date certain, so anyone watching knows. <laughs> Next month. All right. You've got it. All right. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is working. Didn't you already read that? I, I already read this one. <laughs> no, I didn't. I got stopped, luckily. I think Reagan poked me in the rib. Um, so now we have a work session requested by Working Stiff Properties, LLC, owner for property located at 92 Pleasant Street, where permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing structure. Replace windows and storm windows. Construct an iron balcony and replace two windows with balcony doors as per plans on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on uh, assessor map 107, that's lot 76, lies within the character district for downtown overlay and historic district. And who could be here to present them? Matt, Matthew right. Beebe uh, and Barbara Jenny. 92, 94. Are you the main time. presenter then, Barbara? Yeah. She well, is tonight. Nick has I'm going to advance, but you're right. doing the yes, talk. Yes, you're going to advance. Okay. I'll use my screen for um, So we were here last <coughs> month, and we talked about uh, changing out windows and residing our building at 9294 Pleasant Street, um, and uh, also trying to get you to wrap your head around a balcony in the back. Mm -hmm. So. So that's our building there on the left there uh, by the yellow fire hydrant. You know where that is? You can advance. I'm trying. Oh, so sorry. Yeah. Um, good. This is it. Yeah, this is a good one from the front. So there it is, and that's pre-solar panels. That's right after we bought the property in 2015. Pre-fire. Yeah. Pre-fire, yeah. yeah. Pre -fire. Oh, yeah. And there's the state nice streets. Nice streets. Salad days. Yes. That's what it used to look like. Oh, pre louis um, wow. And so here are a couple of um, shots from the Athenaeum. I love going to the Athenaeum because everybody loves to help you find pictures. Um, and so you can see the original uh, row house, uh, you know, set up there. Um, so is there any way that um, you had thought about um, the, this? What is it? The bull and frog? What is it? Buff and 
Buff and oh, Buff and, oh, buff and oh, Clown. Oh, now it is. Oh, what is the name? Where are you seeing that? Oh, she has it. Under Hello. Oh, yeah. Theory, theory Salon. Theory. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, you haven't presented any plan at all. Here you are doing a major renovation, and you haven't presented a plan for the storefront. Is there any way that you would consider that, that you could put it back like that and not have a storefront? John, maybe they like the storefront. This one. Well, maybe you like well, the storefront. <laughs> I don't. Well, we don't you would, let us, you would let us have residential on the first floor, right? There's the rub, right? So. Um, yeah, a, right? I would love to make it. Yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. love to have it be townhouse. But there is again. residential. There's, and there's commercial in there. Yeah. 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 So, but I think um, that's the reason that it got yeah. changed to the way yeah. that it is, John. Is that someone? No, well, no, 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 no. It got this changed was, long this was ago. Like no, way, this it was Al's barber shop when I was a little yeah, kid. Yeah, no, well, was, before the clip joint. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Oh, you mean it was Al's before? Oh, right. yeah. yeah. So no, only no, I meant it was. It was through that original door. When it was no, Al's? No, no. What? So our, the um, doors. I can't remember. You. Okay. Right? The, but I remember that on so the, the, glass, side. the glass block yeah, and the So the door to the. My people. Okay. <laughs> the door um, to the current commercial space is actually in that right hand window that's between the two doors. Yeah. And right the, there. Yeah. Right. And, the, and then the next door over is, is not part of our yeah, property. Right. I yeah. understand. Yeah. That was Gallagher's sporting goods. All right. Shall we move on? Moving on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, oh, there it is so, and we already talked about. So, Matt talked about the siding. That's your department, right? Yeah. So, essentially, we're gonna. There's two layers of siding on the building. It's an aluminum coil stock wrap over the. I believe it's the original pine siding. Yeah, you've peeked under. And we've yeah. peeked under. And actually, some of the pine siding looks in decent shape but my uh, but I also think that that's the side that gets the least amount of sun and weather so I'm sure when we start peeling the rest of it off it's going to yeah. be a disaster yeah. so, so the plan is to off? take it all the way down to the sheathing insulate with mineral wool and then put real wood clapper siding back on and I had brought some samples last time and we will bring them back to the yeah. official hearing but one um, was uh, clap by uh, cedar clappered siding, which tends to have that little rounded edge, and the other was the wood clappered mill pine siding, which is still available radially sawn, and it has that crisp, sharp edge, which you will find on all these old historic buildings, which we would use. Yeah, yeah. maybe this is a question for later, but how are you going to uh, coordinate this with the rest of the building like are you gonna if, if nothing happens well, next door for a while first. why no no yeah, no I know how, how are you gonna, gonna to Adam to make brought this? that up at the last meeting and so unfortunately unless we come up with 6.8 million dollars <laughs> we no don't have any that. control over the point just to the right of yeah. the new salon there's Would a you just put like a J channel or something to kind of well I talked oh. about just breaking yeah. back yeah. all of the Jeez. siding in smaller amounts so that it's randomly broken back and then putting a vertical board there until the other half of the building gets done and, and then, then I'd like to and yeah. talk to Peter Flores' people that about feathering yeah. that mm -hmm. all back in mm -hmm. okay. but their approvals are kind of different than what we're asking for like for example they don't really have a window specific window purview like we're proposing well, what we're proposing is Green Mountain windows what they proposed was mm -hmm to replace or to match existing and they've got a bunch of final windows in there oh they can't they can't do that so it's not no work. well i would like to that. think okay no, you, you, you don't have to think. you have to think not like with to think. You, or does that go with <laughs> which one John? the center doorway yeah. no that's no that's the purple floral door. Floor. so the center door belongs to floral yeah. yes are you talking about the yeah. far right yes yes the yes, blue line. The yes. Blue. yeah, yeah. The, you can see the brick just to the left yeah. of that blue trim is that your property line? Yes, yeah, so that's a firewall that goes all the way up to mm -hmm. the underside of the roof. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know how that came about. Yeah, yeah interesting. Okay, so you can advance. And so here you can see some of the old clavers. Yeah. <laughs> under yeah. Uh, that end of the building that we don't own. Oh, yeah. So we we talked about restoring the window trim too because except for the two lower well, windows we on the... can advance the slide. We have oh. to, Nick would have to go back. No, back. no, I have more slides. How about yeah. this? Yep, Oops, there we go. Wait, that's the window. Okay, but that's not the one I was referring to. But anyway, okay. so it, when they do the metal siding, 
I'm being redundant. I said all this at the last meeting, but for those of you who weren't here, um, they cut the sills off to match the Four. trim of the aluminum. They, on two, only two windows did they not do that. Yeah. All the rest, I have a, me, a method and a plan to repair that so that the sill has the same thickness, extends to the edges of the casings where, the way it's supposed to. It's very common. So, Actually, so I mean, we were all there because Reagan and I were You listening. guys were zooming in. Right? Yeah, we were zooming in. Here. And um, so I think that the main contentions that we had, we have obviously no problem with you removing the aluminum. We obviously have no problem with you. Um, uh, you were going to look at the third story windows, you know, and see um, they're rounded or not, whatever. On that gable, and, right. uh, so um, yeah, so you you're not, Sorry, apparently you're not going to do the storefront. You're just going to let it sit there with the glass blocks, which is. Where am I going? Uh, well, there's, because we didn't have these slides before, those are the yeah. little corbels we were talking about. Yeah, that little corbels. Yeah. 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 Very nice in that yeah. type of style of building. So um, the problems that we had were with the w replacement of all the windows. Um, versus restoring and putting new storm windows on. And the other problem was taking two windows out and putting in patio doors on the second floor with a balcony. So I think that that's what we should be talking okay. about. So if you'll advance another slide. I, want, I just so wanted okay. to make one point uh, in answering John's yeah. summary, is that the six dormer windows? Yeah are all like a cheapo Rivko No, so you're going to replace those. So yeah, those would no be all new construction. That. Yeah, the idea would be new construction Green Mountain windows and hence our desire to use the yeah. Green Mountain everywhere. Yeah. We'd really like to eliminate the storm windows. Yeah, if you can advance one more okay. one slide, more. I think. I have some. Nope, I guess we went too far. Too far? Go back. Now some people just go too far. All of our balconies. Here, so um, <coughs> walk through the south end. What's that? Um, so that you could. So there are a lot of houses with um, I don't, you know, replacement do you windows. Replacement oh, so window, replacement windows, but with the small muttons yeah. and no storms. Um, and, there's ours. Yeah, and there's ours. <laughs> we know. Um, and I just think that you know, so you get the energy efficiency, and I think it looks better without the storm. There are things um, called uh, inside storms too that you can purchase. So uh, what was suggested and um, would be to have uh, Mr. Adams has volunteered <laughs> to just go inside um, if you would take him in mm -hmm. at an I appointment am. and look at the window sure. and try to determine the age of these windows. Mm -hmm. I think they may be the original. the original to the yeah. building. Yeah. So we had Luca. That's our suggestion for the windows at this point. Before we come before, before we vote. Hearing. Okay. Yeah. So we did, I think I discussed this at the last meeting that we had Luca Selabek in there, who is the Newburyport restoration specialist. He did the ones so across the road. We, we, are not, we are not advocating for the Green Mountain windows because there's any sort of savings, believe me. Um, we could actually do it for less if we restored them and put the storms back on, but. As sort of tied into some of my comments earlier in the evening, I'm always uh, interested in trying to get energy efficiency to a maximum. This building, without any insulation in the walls, costs about $900 a month in the middle of winter to heat with the, it's the gas steam. Still not warm. And it's well, it's some places <laughs> it's, it's too warm. Um, but so insulating the building, of course, will help. But if we still have those large window weight pockets around each window, we're fighting a bit of a losing battle. You're always going to have drafts, and um, so there are other anyway. types of balances that oh you, you yeah can get. one of the yeah. places I that, that uh, I'm with John on this uh, it, heel dragging. Uh, but one of the reasons is John and I've been in the trades for some time, mm -hmm. and and we've seen an awful lot of new modern high efficiency windows just turn out to be none of those things and and really what we've seen an awful lot of people just throw away sash that were perfectly serving their original purpose and their original style for things that were going to be wonderful that turned out to not be at all and and it seems like in many cases it's been a net loss to our architectural heritage mm -hmm. so I'm gonna drag my feet every time we talk have these conversations 
I'm afraid that there are other voices in, you know, right. that are also in that vein. Um, there are you without can, being an, an, excuse me without being an antagonist. I will say that, especially in light of what yeah. we've just seen with the firehouse, okay. not a single original window left from that yeah. one. Okay. But on the two houses directly across the street from our property, yeah. so, one has Green Mountain windows and one has Lucas Celebic okay. uh, restored windows. Yeah, I with, understand that. So, so thank you very much. Um, what I want to say is that we look at each property differently. And um, the, the fact that your building seems to have all of the original window seems to make sense that we should be looking at these windows as far as savings. As far as your, your weight pocket is, is a very good uh, reason to, to have replacement windows simply because you have that three inches. I know that. And I also know that that those two iron weights in there are like radiators of cold because when they get cold mm -hmm. they're there they conduct heat and, and he, you can heat up all you want you know right. and you still got you know 50 pounds of cold iron sitting there i realize that but you can have if you found maybe another window person um you know balances that the windows slide up and down in you know, and they can be made out of a historic material like copper and be spring-loaded, and they would allow the windows. And if you're afraid of the windows settling down, there's little catches that you can, you know, you know all oh, of sure. this. Oh, yeah. sure. You know all of this. Yes. Okay, so there are alternatives. So if you want to, you know, put your heels into the ground, that's up to you. And if we want to put our heels in, that's up to us. Well, we're here because we're trying to determine I how many heels that. are well, yeah. Uh, yeah. But So but can we it, talk about the balcony and, and that? Then? Well, but it's related. So let me just, I'm going to just say it one more time. So we okay, could spend the same time. amount of money to restore the windows, and they could look beautiful, and they're restored. And then you put a storm on the outside. Putting a storm on the inside is not so maybe you don't it's not have to Strawberry do Bank. People live in there. Maybe you could put a wooden storm on the Maybe you could put an inside storm. There are other alternatives. This is uh, 2022. Right. I'm afraid there's a lot of alternatives. Right. Maybe that's well, a good. And there's green That's a good opportunity for so. David right. to, if he comes to the mm -hmm. site and looks at the inside, we can talk about those alternatives because I'd really not. I'd yeah. rather not have them on the outside. Okay. That's good. But um, then there are. So of the, all the windows on the outside, just to be clear, even those gable windows that we think are curved, those are also not original. Those are Rivco windows that someone cut a crescent and nailed to the good. top. I understand what so, you're saying. So you. we'll we'll still have a, there'd be a combination of. Those could be replaced. Right, right. Because they are modern windows. So just so that we would present it that way. Yeah, that would be the way the, to do it. For the hearing. Um, okay. So. I mean, let's talk about the balcony. Let's. Anybody else jump on this balcony? Anybody? Well, let me get down to see what. Have you you've added in? Well, <laughs> wait, they might have something to say before. Have you added any more to the discussion with your. There's different images. Yeah, they've got lots of photos. Yeah. So do you want to say a few things before everybody before. jumps well, in? I'll, I'll talk to the images. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying. No, so go ahead. So advance to my first balcony image, if you would. So that's. Sorry, I thought that cresting was okay, part of it. Okay, there's my pun. Okay, and um, <laughs> gotta get the pun. So I took a nice walk and found balconies, and so here's a couple that are over, um, you know, bay, bay windows, which we are not. There's a lovely one right there on Market Street. Um, at advance. Yep. Um, and then at a, with a little tip that I got. Um, I went walking down here, and here are some wrought iron balconies. Um, that's Siri Street? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's Siri Street. So there's two. There's a lot um, going on in the back of that. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, there they are. And then uh, with fa a fabulous I wonder if Peter made work. those. Sorry, keep going? Oh, I, I you want me to go to the next um, one? I, I don't think Peter did make no, those. those. No, he was he joking. Would, he yeah. would be, there. He'd be pretty <laughs> old. Be telling yeah. him uh, um, and then, um, and just as a, just oh. to make the point that, you know, there is pretty strong tradition of these kinds of stacked porches behind lots of buildings all along Court Street that are very visible from the side streets, to, because I didn't, you know, uh, Rogers Four. Street and all that. Um, and then here is right here also on series a new 20th century, 21st century um, balcony with, um, uh, what do you call those, the iron brackets, oh, the brackets that we would not want to use, um, but there's one right there on a collaborative building. 
is ours. Is this near Pocos or something? That is yeah, over yeah, uh, Dos. Yeah. No, this is. But this, is this was done in my time. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You went yeah. over the yeah. restaurant yeah. right yeah. down by. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, what's it called? That oh, Mexican restaurant. Right near Either the old ferry landings on that building. back side. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Do you want is to there more? The one with the yeah. Oh, okay. just to see yeah. the back. Yeah. So here's the existing condition. So last time I said, okay. you know, um, it's not a lovely area. It's the back of a building, and as much as you can say yes, it shows to the Court Street. It's very much the back of the building, and uh, nobody else has respected it very much. Look at all the <laughs> electric lines um, and the chases, and uh, we've got a big cinder block building uh, for our butter uh, cinder block wall um, that the current owner was going to keep. So there's that. Um, that uh, that L um, was was original, but only about half its length. Just FYI. Um, and if you want to advance to the next. Yep. Um, so here's just more details of that. And then we had a lovely, uh, another utility pole um, put up. So, you know, just to make the point that we're, we're balancing all these things and you want us to look historic and lovely and then just this is onslaught of um, stuff. Um, so if you would advance to the next slide. And so there's my little uh, very quickly Photoshopped balcony up there um, just to add perhaps to the visual noise. To me, it doesn't, there's so much visual noise going on back there, it doesn't matter. And if you'll advance to the next slide. <clears throat> One can do some, uh, make some choices with sort of a mid-tone, you know, monochromatic paint to sort of blend all of it and all the chases um, Matt talked about, we should put an application in for some sort of, you know, uh, box around um, the air conditioning mechanicals. Uh, but there, you know, there is a way just simply with paint to, to try to minimize some of that visual clutter that's going on in the back. How deep is this? Yeah, it looks like 18 inches. Uh, no, uh, well, from the it's perspective. I mean, What's it's it my, meant to be? It's my five-minute Photoshop. Yeah. So you can it, we have the plans on here. What, so what is that supposed to be? It's supposed there. to be three foot four inches, I think. Okay. Yeah, the okay. original So plan you can was, see it from, yeah. The, yeah. Uh, if I keep just going. Just enough to yeah. get a chair. So, and then that's the as-is. Right. And so I will, I will do there it is better there. Photoshop for the next meeting. Yeah, and yep. there it is. Yeah. So that because we like have that. the brand new uh, pole that was put there, it, um, it's in here right there. Yeah. Is there a cross? Side? There it is. There it is. So you can yeah. see it there. Yeah. And then, if, and that was just a, a file that Matt, Matt yeah, had in his that program. Off the internet, so. um, but I have in subsequent slides, I have some sample. Uh, wrought iron, like period wrought iron railing that um, um, one of which is to That railing is done by Peter Henry. This one? The stair rail. <laughs> oh, the stair, stair railing. The stair railing. Yeah. Uh, on the ground level. One thing I would want you to check on is because this is a multi unit building, you might have to be a 42 unit, 42 oh, inches. 42, 42, yeah, 42 inches. Yeah, 42 inches tall, which is quite tall. Um, mm -hmm. A lot more than what you're showing on all of your diagrams. Okay. My understanding from Paul is that because that's a residential unit, we yeah. could still get away with 36 inches high, but I doubt that. I think yeah. it would be 42. If Paul said that. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, who else can I mean, go by? Was he, being, was he in one of his nice stages? It's yeah, not going to feel very good at 36 either when you're on it, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's not very high. And all of the classic the rails that you see on these <clears throat> Victorian buildings are all about this high. Right, but I most of them are Juliet balconies that you don't go out onto. You right. put a potted plant out there. They yeah. want to sit out there, yeah. walk from one door to the other. I don't know, whatever. It'll be what it'll be, if, yeah. it, if it'll be. Yeah. Martin. Can I come in? Uh, yes. I'm, I'm just concerned. You're showing, you're showing a little garden. Um, rails um, that I think an applied one I could see possibly living with but cutting open the cutting open these new door two doors where there's windows and then to structurally tie that back in could be a nightmare and I just I can't support that that would be too major an alteration to that existing structure but if you wanted to put some applied garden rail 
you know, that you've shown a few examples of? That's why I asked how deep it, it was. So you could open the window and have that rail. I, I could just a few more like a Juliet. Yeah, yeah. I could, okay. I could is what he's saying. Stomach right. that, I think. So do you want to? Can we go back and look at oh. some of the character uh, photos? Is they, do they help? Because there were a lot of Juliet balconies. There. Well, mm -hmm. if you go, if you actually go forward. Okay. Where to? Let me you have to zoom out again. Yeah. You're sort of zoomed in. Okay, where to? Yeah, just keep going forward, and I had just so you can sort of see sample. Um, uh, that's, yeah. So there's just different. Oh. That actually is a two code Victorian style railing. Yeah. That first one that one can yeah. buy. And there's other examples. So. That's kind of time appropriate, so just, I think, for the building, yeah. possibly. Yes. So backing up to sort of, mm -hmm. this is the Juliet balcony, and this is Correct. more. This is more what you're targeting, even mm -hmm. though it's deeper. Right. But you, would, um, at least in your case, Martin, you would support the one on the higher floor. No. I, yeah, but the, that shows an alteration to the windows. I, I just don't think that you can get the structural loads to meet code that to tie it back into an old structure like that. I don't think it's achievable. Would Even if we did forty-five degrees. Oh, I, there's no question in my mind I could do it. Oh, but yeah. that's but the the issue at large here I think is or the larger issue yeah. is is the aesthetic. Will you accept the aesthetic? Yeah. I let yeah. me worry about the structure. Yeah, we'd have I can make that happen. Right. But yeah, no, you, yeah. I mean, you, you you are a contractor. I don't know if everybody. But he's. Knows I mean, that. in this thing, you're showing a, a web thickness of something like six inch with a, and that's with a ceiling and a floor. Which means that we're looking at a four-inch core to it. Uh, I don't. I agree with Martin. It's going to be difficult to get that to work with a four-inch core. Core. If you will cut out a plate from the side of the building and actually break holes in the framing, the continuous framing of your building, and then take the ceiling down and the build the room below it and run a couple of steel beams back. Yes, you could do it. But by the time it gets outside, it's going to be 12 inches thick, and then. Nick's people are going to want you to put a 42 inch rail on top of that thing, and all of a sudden you're at five oh, foot. Okay. Deal breaker, anyway. It's too much. It's not a Juliet balcony any longer. Right. Right. I like Martin. I, I I'm not offended by the idea of some wrought iron around it. It's a it's a ha, just the interesting side of a, an interesting building, and doing a little something. Uh, I don't think it's a horrible thing to this. It's it's not an architectural gem. Or an architecturally gem-like setting, but but it, once you get past that aesthetic Juliet thing, it starts to get into you know putting bicycles and room for rotisserie and, and a lounge chair <laughs> oh, and no. and all of a sudden I'm just no. like I don't I don't want to do that to my town. <laughs> so so what about something like like this, which has like an 18-inch projection uh, this is down series. on series both so can, can, with one door can i jump in yes, yes, has, yes. has comes to, uh, about the aesthetics of it <laughs> not structure um i have to say all of the ex examples that you've shown here don't really support your argument <laughs> for putting it on this building because each of the examples is very specifically set up. I mean, like those are those are fire escapes in the back for the for the units. This thing is a brand new addition on the back of the building, so it's new construction. Um, the other thing, the other balconies are on bay windows and things like that. So I just that's my problem is that there's really not a good example historically of of this type of thing um, on a wood collaborative building. The, the, the wrought iron ones and the brick buildings are beautiful, and, um, but they're very appropriate to a brick building, and so I just don't see how it fits on this particular collaborative building. Um, I, again, I think that it, I could possibly be amenable to a, a, like a short balcony type, type thing that, that has been discussed, but um, like a big one that you sit, sit out on. Um, I just, a wood I rail, see. wood rail. Um, that's Very, then that that becomes big and bulky. No, and it doesn't have to be. Wood. You don't have to use four by fours. And you don't. Have, you know, you could make a more delicate wood rail. 
Okay. Anybody else got any suggestions, Margo? My suggestion is that this is a simple structure that has had unfortunate things happen to it, <laughs> but it is still a simple, delicate facade. All of the utility poles and all the other stuff beside. And I think that if you took your idea of painting and and cosmetically improving the situation as you have it would do way more for the enjoyment of this building than any balcony that you could put on. Because I, I think that it will go from looking like uh, a mishmash of mistaken happenings <laughs> to something that, this is actually quite a cute building. If you could ignore this little part right here, down here, <laughs> this this is this is original, and it, and it has proportion and it has delicate little things to it that I think should be left as is and enjoyed. And I don't think adding wrought iron railings and balconies and anything like that is going to do anything for the historic nature, the historic character of this building, the parts that are still left which is close to three quarters of it. Okay. Well spoken. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll just, <laughs> just chime in and say that, that, that I, I agree. I, I think it's a simple building, but it's a, it's a good building. It's a great building. And I, I think adding things that really don't belong there aren't going to enhance it. I think it's just better to, to deal with what you have. Having been involved in both of the buildings across the street, that is such a busy corner. I can't imagine the functionality of that balcony. I mean, there's absolutely no privacy there. It's a busy intersection. Uh, I, I don't think it does service. To hey, we building. actually stay in there. So I, the, the goal is function, right? And so the, the goal is function that it would be really enjoyable to have an outdoor space on the second floor, floor apartment. That's where we want to live. Um, and so it's, you know, form follows function. And so then thinking, okay, well, if I want an outdoor space and to enjoy that, my property downtown, and I'll do all these lovely other historic things to restore the building, it's sort of a give me. You know, I give you this, you give me that, right, so I can enjoy the building. And so, yes, and then, so I'm not trying to enhance the back of the building. I'm saying there already is a lot of visual noise. So I want this function. So how can I do that and minimize, and minimize right, that, that effect on the back by, you know, monochromatic painting and that kind of thing. So I definitely am not looking at the balcony as a way to make the building look better. Yeah, I'm, I'm understanding the it. functionality of that space yeah. and how it would function for you. Yeah. You know, yeah. No privacy, no. Yeah, but way better than being down on the parking lot on the first floor, for sure. Yeah, a little bit of a view of the pond and that kind of thing. So we, we live, I've stayed there, but, you know, so I know that it's a nice view up there. One thing we have had discussions of, and actually a little bit tonight uh, amongst ourselves, is uh, not every building is suited for every task. You know, not every building is suited for a restaurant, for instance. Mm -hmm. or, you know, so the possibility that maybe this is not a building that has a second floor, you know, space, outdoor space. Mm -hmm. like that's, uh, that's for you know a vote to, to come up sure. with. Um, does anybody else want to jump in on this or? Um, hey, Nick, if you'll just forward to the, I think it's the last slide, we had sort of a plan B or a plan C. Last slide? Yeah. The historic rail. And no. No? Actually, since you love um, storm windows and you won't oh. mind this. Um, so go to the end. Yeah. So um, keeping, uh, so if we replace the window um, but have it open in, um, and then, is this the balcony window or all? It's like a, it's glass. a glass Juliet balcony essentially. Oh, so you I keep see. the window as you have it. You know, so it's sort of a compromise. You know, putting so this a, a low profile in swing glass. casement. You're saying because mm -hmm. these are square where yours are yeah. rectangular. So then the window has the exact same For look. A window? Or are you still thinking of putting in a door? No, no, no so then you do the same window. Two so windows so that open yep. in and yeah. Or out, I guess. If green mountain, can make, green mountain like so. make a window. They make yes. the, they yeah. make they make the that center style, yeah. so it looks yeah. just like a yeah. window, exactly. yeah. and it would swing in. We may, yeah, we in one of the windows, the the older, uh, not the original windows, but the Rifco-like windows, the city 
inspection department may want an egress window in one of those I'm and, they, and the only way to accomplish it is to use that yeah. no, case I, I, that I looks think, like the double hung I so. think that you are going to have to have egress window so regardless of us trying to save every window in the building there will be some of them that will have to be replaced with an egress window. Is that, but just up on the third. That's only if they're changing the units. Aren't they grandfathered no, they have a unit there? No, they're not grand. No, no. When they go and, and remodel this building, the first thing he's going to say is, where's the egress window? All of the second. In the good old days, Roger used to let all of us get away with this sort of thing. The first and second floor windows are so large that the single piece of sash lifted up meets One egress. Sash. So it's the third store, the third story, the third floor only where I might have to do one because there's a bedroom that has a dormer window and one bit. of those gable windows and we can make the gable window meet egress by using that Green Mountain casement that looks like a double hung. So those windows are what, 4.7 square feet? Yeah, those That's are big windows. Cool, uh, and they're open? 32, no more than yeah, 32. Yeah, it's on stucco. It is hard to find on Clabber. That's why, yeah. you know, to find one right in our own city, in our own <clears throat> historic district. I was like, boom, there it is. <laughs> You've allowed it in the past. Not you. <laughs> no, someone has it. Frank Jones yes. did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think, um, you know, this is a very difficult situation. Um, if you can, if you want to go with what you were suggesting and you know, bring it up for a vote, you know? oh, yeah, I mean, that, that's what we got to do, something like that. Because there's a lot of disagreement, I think, flowing amongst us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those are, that looks more like yeah. a casement, though, right, Nick, then? Yeah. Did you find that? Yeah. Uh, I'm Googling them. There's I mean, did that, was it, <laughs> so Google them. If, we, if so, we went back to that Green Mountain page, did, Green that, Mountain did, page? That, show, did that show the casement? Looks like a double hung that I'm referring to. Yeah, I think uh, no, I guess no, but we 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 you guys have I mean, oh yeah, we've we know that we've actually yeah. had that just approved yeah. it for me in a project. On Somebody brought a little on one Street about a year ago. Yeah, so no, we've seen the, the ADU. Of them. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. great invention that they. I think so too, yeah. especially for trying to get out quick. All right. Okay. So, so you know, I think yeah. we have a. Yeah. So we're going to come and see you to look at the windows. Yeah, you can. Yeah, so it sounds like at best you should be looking at at best Juliet balconies, not mm -hmm. not table and chair balconies. Yeah, and there's still people that don't want that, but I'm hearing some people willing to look at it. I'm, and, I'm, right? I'm, you know, I would be willing to Maybe look at um, a slightly okay. smaller balcony. Um, okay. I'm not sure. Do you need two doors? Yeah, Is that just something phone. that you've come up with, thinking that you you need two? Doors? Well, if for a useful balcony to get, yeah, to get to really have a nice function and have a few people come out. I think if we were walking yeah. out onto it, the mm -hmm. two doors gave you access to yeah. it. Because it wasn't going to be very deep. It you because could... it's a Juliet, maybe your in-swing casements are going to work. So your right. openings don't get any bigger. Right. Yeah, you would use the existing opening. And then you just yeah. open so the window are... and you would feel like you're outside, exactly. but you're still standing <clears throat> on the right. floor. You can still put a floor. pot oh, out. We were going to use the existing width, though, for the doors. like if. Yes. Except, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Either way, we weren't going to change the opening yeah. as you see it from the outside. Yeah. The door was going to fit. The opening within. gets bigger. The, the, the door is much smaller than the. Oh, I mean, it, it will get taller. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, but in terms of width, it was yeah. going to remain the same. So a fallback option, if you have a Juliet balcony that you're not going out onto, is to have your casement windows in the window openings, not. Yes. Make, that's back yeah, up on that's that. exactly so that's the, plan B. The door was the same height as the top of the windows. They all line up because they're really tall. Windows. Correct. Yes, yeah, they, they had to open it up at below the bottom. To, yes, right, at to the step bottom, out. but you wouldn't see that because the balcony. That's right. Anyway, that's the right. monochromatic idea is great. You know, it's it's just we it's only just had a purview of the color. I know, and, and it's going to be kind of a shame to see it go around the corner and head down Pleasant Street and then mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. dock. You mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Because, well, who knows what the color would be chosen for the other rest of the building. But say la vie, that's just the way the building is. And as a side note, that, that masthead where the electricity comes in, that's going to have to be moved. If He's you're going to have a whole Oh, yeah, 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 because it's, it's too great. Right. Yeah. No, we've been battling with Eversource for a month about other issues, and that was a sidebar, mm -hmm. but I sure. think... We've been winning so far. I don't know. <laughs> we might have no, to go. If we really wanted to clean it up, we'd have to go underground. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. There's a win for you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's the win. Right. So should we 
to confer? How should we get in touch to set up an appointment? Get in touch with Nick. Through Nick. Nick okay. Nick's Nick. a solid guy here. Okay. It, he'll drag me out, wake me up, okay. give me a cup of coffee, <laughs> drag oh, me we'll over. We'll get you a coffee. Oh, All right. Right. Come to the education. <laughs> we'll treat you well. Seven. <laughs> okay. Thank you very All right. much. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are we, we can. Are we continuing this? Are we continuing yes, this case? needs to be continued. Okay. I'll, I'll move to continue to next month. Just in Second. Case. Okay. in case you need it. Uh, well, I think yeah. we're going to work In case you need it. But in case you need it, we're yeah. doing it. You can always file for okay. a hearing. We can change yeah. it to the public. Yeah. Okay. You can. No, you'll have to Thank file you. if you yeah. want a public hearing. Yeah, I know we do. Yeah. You have and to then this will just get right. withdrawn. This gives us a chance just in case. In case we don't get our Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever gone on a, 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 a site walk with your slippers on? That was my <laughs> <laughs> once, only once, <laughs> only once. Yeah. We need to vote on the yeah continuance. Continuance. I thought we just did. I don't think you did. All in favor? I move. Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Okay, so we have one more work session. <laughs> yes. Sorry about the long wait. Right. We got a few hours. Yeah. For you guys. We're here for you. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. I we'll look at each rung individually. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid we're losing somebody. Um, you guys have tomorrow. coffee coming, right? <laughs> yeah. But we'll it's it's just to work. Pizza. Like <laughs> I'll take that. Good night. <laughs> All right. Work session this, this, requested by Mark so Wharf Condominium I can talk super fast then, okay. But when he's done. Owner, for property located at 33 Deer Street, wherein permission is requested to allow renovations to an existing property. Extend third floor decks, replace balcony railings, light, lighting, and other miscellaneous improvements as per plan on file in the planning department. Said property is shown on assessor map 119 as lot 1B, lies within character district five downtown overlay and historic districts who is here to present this i'm joshua butkus with the stefano mogul architects okay. representing the owners of three deer street um, just to be familiar with the, the project here we've got two buildings um, all condominiums um, on deer street there are uh, retail commercial spaces above that and behind that are uh, the condominiums behind the two buildings is the is a courtyard and then a hotel um, at the back so that first page is just familiarizing you with the property on the second page um, we're highlighting so we have two buildings building uh, a and building b um, i'll start with building a so on building a we have sort of a garden level it's a little bit lower than building b and what we're proposing here is to replace what is some trellis work that is either enclosing some hvac spaces or beautifying the concrete retaining wall at the garden level. Um, we have two different strategies there. We'd like to uh, apply horizontal boards to the retaining wall at the garden level to beautify that, uh, create a nicer looking space for the tenants below, and then use vertical boards um, at the uh, mechanical spaces underneath the decking. Um, for hiding the HVAC space and there's some storage space in there. One, yeah, what sheet are you on? Oh, sheet two. Okay. Yeah, sheet two. yeah, just tell me when to advance. Yeah. Give me. So the second sheet, sheet two, uh, building A is what I'm referring to now. And then uh, using a similar strategy on building B, um, using those horizontal boards, as you can see in the top two images. So the far left image is the existing, the image to the right of that is the new image, and we're showing uh, those horizontal boards being applied to uh, behind that are existing concrete retaining walls. And the idea here is just to dress up um, the tenant outdoor spaces, give it sort of a, a nicer, more residential feel. Um, does anybody have any questions on that before I move to the next sheet? Great. It's gonna be a painted, painted boards or Actually, painted? we're looking to do something that's a little bit more long lasting and lower maintenance, so something like an AZEC, um, an AZEC board. With a permanent color. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And you'll tell us what color eventually. Precisely. And we've got some samples on our, on our specification sheet at the end. Okay. All right, so moving on to the next sheet. <clears throat> um, I'm going to start in the top left here, just so easier on the page. Um, so at the front of the building on Deer Street, there are examples of existing ceiling treatments. Again, this is um, an AZEC um, board that's meant to look like natural wood. Um, and so they'd like to replace the ceilings at the rear balconies. Um, in this case, we're looking at an HVAC balcony. It's not actually a habitable balcony um, with that board. And then trim 
uh, wrapping that to match existing um, as seen on the front of the building and around uh, other spaces on the building. Um, on the right hand <coughs> images, those two top hand images, that's the back of building A. Building A has a longer balcony that stretches all the way across both the second story and third floor. So we'd like to do um, similar ceiling treatments there as well. Anybody have questions there before I move to the next sheet? Right. Um, so we are on sheet four of seven now. So we're back on at the top left or the front of the building. So uh, there are balconies running across the front of the building. Um, they would like to uh, reduce the overall footprint of the actual balcony decking. So it actually kind of hides from view a little further. It's not, it's not a great looking system that they have there now. So they want to beautify that. And then they want to upgrade um, the railings there. So we're actually going to replace not exactly what's what's at that balcony, but there is an existing railing on site um, we have in the specifications. Um, it's very, very similar. It has a slightly more uh, high quality look and a classic look to it. Um, we do have a white option and a black option, uh, but here we're showing white option. So that's the front of the building and the top right images we're showing the rear of the building. Um, same exact thing, just replacing uh, the existing railings and upgrading those both in quality and value. So this is um, this regal aluminum white railing. Mm -hmm. So it has a very small corner, doesn't it? It has like a two two inch square corner. It's small. It's definitely smaller than yeah. the wood post oh, that's, yeah. that's currently there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> that kind of thing, you know, is always an option for balconies. You know, just <laughs> Yeah. Ah, we're going back. We're still running the last. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. Thank okay, you. Uh, keep going. A quick little design charade on the previous. Jeez. All right. Uh, I'm going to move to Think of it as a pro bono donation. I'm going to move to the next sheet. Um, so at rear, and these, are the, I'm going to address the top two images on the right right now. So that rear balcony I was talking about on the third floor that runs all the way across, this is building A. Um, the client would actually like to extend that uh, three feet. So they'd like to take that whole balcony and pull it out away from the building three feet. At the second floor, you can see there's some entrances, there's stairways going up about a half flight to, to some decks there. What they'd like to do is they'd like to bring that third floor balcony out to that same extent so the posts carry from the garden level up to that third floor. Um, the idea here is to both give some a little bit more outdoor living space and, and some coverage uh, to the second floor entry. Um, and that will go in line with the replacement of the balconies or the railings along that balcony and the same ceiling treatments underneath. Any questions on that? You don't think that's heading into Motel 8 sort of territory? <laughs> what? Who is this? Rotisseries and something out of the balcony or something like that? No, I mean, it's, um, it is a very communal public space. There, are Every single unit across that back there does have balconies. Um, as you can see from the images, there is very little um, storage. I don't know what the you know what the rules are, what people are allowed to have out on their balconies and whatnot, but it is it is kept clean and, and nice looking. And the idea here is just to give a little more space and beautify that a little further. And if you carry it up to the next floor, what happens? So you're going to be using that same sort of uh, brown plastic ceiling material. Correct. Three feet wider. Is the lower deck out that three feet now? It is, isn't it? The the lower on the second floor you're referring to the second floor decks where those entrance doors are. There isn't any decks on the first. That's floor. not a deck on the first no, floor with the patios. railing on it. The those patios. Patios. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that you actually look down into a hole there, Dave. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's a hole protection. Say, that looks down into the garden here. level. It's yeah. a landing. No reason. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, those are landings. Where, like the lattice you can see underneath. Interesting. Right yes. Hmm. All right. Thank you. So yeah, it's just that third floor that's being pulled out. I thought you approved this, Dave. What year was this? This, uh, 80, you'd have to, 86, this side of the building, you'd have to be in the Sheridan courtyard, right? To see. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yes, exactly. It's very yep. difficult. Yeah, this is completely yeah. off the street. Yeah, yeah it's only uh, the front balconies that I addressed where we're actually kind of pulling back the actual decking, too. So when you're on the sidewalk level, you will see the railings, but you won't even see the, the top decking or the waterproofing yeah. or any of that. That'll be pulled back. So I'm going to move to the next sheet if everyone's okay yeah. with that. So here we're just showing um, the specifications for what we're proposing. Um, top left, that's our. Uh, the ceiling boarding, um, top right, that's that white railing option. Bottom right, um, we've got a timber tech. So these are that timber tech AZAC that we were talking about. Um, we like to do something two tones. We give both some contrast um, nice. to help uh, with the, the stairs and treads. Are you screwing them? 
Are you screwing through the material? Just wondering. I or are you the, putting the little clips in that hold it? I haven't actually covered that with the client as current. It My assumption would be face screwing, given the just the amount of it that's going on and, and what we're using for it. Have you? Okay. <laughs> did you ever look at a black railing? We did, and we have that as an option in here as well. Um, oh, it is. Okay. Yep. Is that the last sheet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so on the next sheet, we um, so top left, we have some lighting. So we have both decorative lighting and floods. Um, they'd like to replace all the existing locations on the building with those. Um, and then... Um, bottom right, there's some pavers there. Where there's there's possibility for um, addition of scope in that garden level or, or repairing some of the pavers that are down there in kind. And then on the left here, um, showing some planters. And I can go back to a previous sheet, but they have a, we've outlined on the sheet where we may want to dress up some of those outdoor garden level spaces. With are these planters. the pavers that you used outdoors? Or well, you really want plastic pavers? These are these aren't the there current isn't. pavers, and they're not even sure if they're going to be oh. changing that out. We just had it in our scope because it's one of the options that they're looking at doing. Yeah. But currently, it's not. Where would that go? That would go at the gar so at the garden level. So it's, go to the back again. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Um, Meaning this lower level, the lowest level. Yeah. So if you go, uh, is it a concrete floor? Is that why? It is currently pavers. If you go to sheet two of seven, top right images and zoom in you can see like where that lattice work has been highlighted red uh -huh. through the snow there you can see some pavers there yeah um, and that's actually the area uh, mr chairman do we have any purview over pavers you know i'm thinking Things that, that. <laughs> i'm thinking that we don't i did you have purview like before 10 just... <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. very good point <laughs> very um, good point i just i i I hope we don't get stuck on on the pavers. But yeah, I know, and I don't think I don't <laughs> think we stuck? do. Just landscape. I, I don't think much of plastic pavers. I guess is no, the no. point. So me, <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I you me, I, you don't want to bring me <laughs> into a situation where I <laughs> no, drag this don't. thing down. No, we're, we're so going. are those concrete pavers now? Just to ask. It's Currently, yes. So, I was trying to get out. I really was. Are we still continuing on? Are we back up page seven, or where are we? So we are. So we were just on page seven. Um, the there's a sheet after that, um, per uh, Nick's comment, that shows all those same railing upgrades, oh. um, but with the black instead. Mm -hmm. I'm at sheet six of seven. Yeah, that didn't have a seven. Yeah, we actually added it as a. So, yeah, I don't we added it at the last minute, so it says four of seven again, but it's the second four of seven. Yeah. We'd like to keep you on your toes. Ah, very good. Yeah, Thank you. by these guys. Yeah, we're oh, smart. So I have to say, I didn't think I was going to like the black, but in the back of the building? Yeah, I think it's the way like it. to go. The front of the building? Because everything else is white. Not so much, because there's just less of it. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a mistake, where in the back of the building, it's a feature. Mm -hmm. You know, a similar comment about the, on the front of the building, back of the building, I think the black's a great idea and the small posts and the rest of that. But when I look at the pieces in the front where they, there are these small roofing roof sections over entry mm -hmm. porticos, and the entry porticos have fairly substantial, not huge, but fairly substantial posts to them, I can't help but break the idea that whoever designed the railings to go on top was looking at those posts and was carrying those posts up the corners, which the two-inch square posts will not do or suffice. So I think there's a mistake being made there if we're really talking about architecture. Yeah, the current post, I mean, the current system that's on there is very... Um, Trying to think of a pleasant term for Sketchy? it. Sketchy. We, we call it builder grade to some degree, but like sure. it's very low grade. Like um, mm -hmm. I don't even think they're four by fours that are currently. Well, I, the I was, they don't I even guess look I was like they're about really pulled all the way through. There, there's a small. Yeah, it's really yeah. hard to get anything yeah. else besides four by four. Right. <laughs> and then we've got two by just <laughs> flat two by on yeah, top yeah, yeah. of that as well. Um, and you that's that's the tree. pressure treated yeah. stained you, you white or are they cedar that's stained white. My assumption is actually yeah. pressure yeah. treated. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't actually like gone up on the balconies and looked at them, um, but just from the ground, <laughs> it has that look to it. The way that the paint has actually ad adhered to it or, or aged can, on it. You know, get a simple, azac white 
four, with four by four posts. You know, and then they have a post cover that goes yep. over the posts. So to your point, I think I agree. I think one of the one of the, the features on the rear is that that we have the brick and we don't have brick in the front, and I think the black. So we were talking about the previous project, the black railing with the brick and the two tone on the back actually does does feel nice together. But at the front, there's so few and it's all white trim. I could see maybe we actually want to do one in yeah. white in the front and black in the back. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. I was thinking we we're going to have no good opinion at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everything all right, Marty? <laughs> I'm not, come oh, on. I think, I think he somehow managed to, to attach a pint underneath this table. He just don't uh, does everybody wear some busy in the back? Right, right. oh, yeah. yeah. I don't mind. Um, and that's it. That's our last, that's, that's all the sheets. So if anyone has any other questions or thoughts or comments. No. I, I like where you're going. Yep. Uh, speaking, um, I think Dave had an interesting point with the lightness or heaviness of those upper of the corner posts, posts on the front yeah. Yeah. so we can look and see if that the railing system has um, an alternate maybe slightly larger corner post you know an alternative idea also is you can use four by fours with the cover over them with a very simple top and then use the aluminum rails in between you know it, it's a system you don't have to but you don't have to use Necessarily, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Wow, think of that. It's amazing. Okay, good. That's it. Great. Very good. So, you so are you coming back for a public hearing? So, if I this is actually my first one, so I think you have to tell me. Yeah. So it sounds like you're, <laughs> you're, think you're, ready. you're you're ready to file. So the yeah. deadline is next Friday. Great. Okay. So we don't need to take a motion. To continue. Okay. We'll save ourselves that motion. We're done. Yeah, that's what we need. Need to adjourn. adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <clears throat> All those in favor. Uh, Aye. 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 Aye.